Dancing, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you, you know who's dancing. <laughs> I was gonna say that I know whose music that song's definitely better than. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It, well, yeah, I don't know. Kanye West's opinion is rated quite high. But he's a Among genius. Th- yeah, <laughs> he's, he's he's a voice of a generation. <laughs> Kanye, aka Gay Fish West. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The ye. Yeah, so apparently Lewis Hamilton was at Kanye West's house for Easter dinner with his family. Oh, my, oh, God. Oh my God. With Kanye's does, does family. Does Kanye what? Like, does he like F1? I don't know. I, I guess he likes... He's always so serious. He likes Lewis Hamilton, All of his pictures looks like he's death-staring people. <laughs> I will murder you. <laughs> right, he says uh, Lewis Hamilton's music is really good. Yeah. In yeah. quotations. In quotations. So he was... So, he, so, so there was Lewis Hamilton sitting around the table with uh, the yeah and, and, <laughs> and Kim Kardashian... <laughs> Right, yes, it, her whole family, and, yeah. the Kardashian clan. <laughs> clan, Jesus Christ, that would have been like that. Must have been funny, man, to see. Unfortunately, I actually read this article. He has a few, <laughs> few quotes from Kanye. Apparently, uh, some music just started playing, and everyone's like, "Whose music is this?" this oh is, my god! This is really dropping cool. a mixtape at a family <laughs> gathering. <laughs> what the fuck? He just like went over to the CD player and play, started playing it. Oh my god. I don't know. Uh, and and, and apparently it was fire. It. Yeah, he refused. Uh, Kanye West <laughs> refused to mention who it sounded like. But uh, I guess nobody really cares. Well, you can't say Kanye's name in front of Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> if you say Kanye three times in front of a mirror, like, yeah. he'll show up. He'll <laughs> <stay behind it. laughs> well, good for him, though. I think I read this article and he's like, oh, yeah, I... You know, I made I made this studio for my girlfriend at the time, and now I just have a studio and not a girlfriend. We, we said that. We said that on the show. I know we said that on the show, <laughs> but uh, it was in this it, article. It's in this article too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I may as well become. But, but he's yeah, he, he's been he's been here and there and everywhere. He went to the to the Pacquiao fight. He was oh, yeah. yeah yeah he was he was there. Yeah, I can't afford it. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, how do you fucking have time for all that stuff? Don't, aren't you- that, that's the thing, and maybe and that, that, that's why people are saying that, uh, that maybe that's why he's, he, his performance wasn't all the way up there oh, right. uh, in the last Grand Prix. Why? Cause, yeah, Grand Rosberg, Prix. Rosberg beat him, right? Correct. He did. Yeah. Before we get too deep into this F1 stuff, yeah. welcome to the Flat Out Fever podcast. Uh, welcome <laughs> back. Okay. Thanks for doing the intro, Danny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Jay. Flatoutfever.com. This is Danny. And I'm Mike. Oh yeah, we do have a website, flatoutfear.com. You can find our our podcast there if you want to subscribe Everything. on YouTube. Everything. Yeah, listen to bamboo.com if you oh, want to hear some yeah. great music. We're recording now. Ah, uh, sort oh. of. We're in pre-production for oh, our next shit. album. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty exciting. All the songs you guys hear at the show. So okay, all cool. those new ones. How many? Is how it, many are set? Like how many are you guys got? We done? have like seven that are like ninety nine percent complete, and then seven. we have like nice. we have maybe three or four other ones that are. Just kind of up in the air. Okay. And so we'll figure out what we can do with those. True. true. So, some songs come easier to make than others. It's just, that's just sort of how it is. That's a creative process. Yeah. yeah. It's always fun. You're like, how about we try this? And then we tried and like, well, that sounded like shit. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> how was your show last week for the Canadian Music Week? Oh, it was great. Big show. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually really don't like playing on weekdays. I, I find <laughs> it kind of odd. Yeah. And, uh, like our, our our draw was pretty good still. Like we we had definitely I think the, the largest crowd there, which was really cool. Oh sweet! But uh, I feel like if it was on the weekend, it would be uh, even be- even better, e- even bigger. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry I couldn't make it, man. Hey, but that's all right. Yeah. Got one of those jobs now. Yeah. yeah. Both of you guys have jobs now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here, fucking <laughs> beating off. <laughs> yeah. I wish, man. Yeah. yeah. Um. But what else we got? We got we got we got Twitter and we got stuff. We Twitter, got, S- Skype, Skype. If you want to video us. chat, yeah, <laughs> no, just don't be weird. <laughs> just about it. Reddit. Yeah. We post on Reddit. Yeah. Flat out fever. 
mostly uh, get downvoted, but that's fine. That, yeah, but, <laughs> but that's the nature of Reddit. That is that is the nature of Reddit. Stealing content. Yeah, yeah, particular is, subreddit. If you don't want to look at a dirty faces too, you can go get MP3s at the website as well. Oh, it's all yeah. there, baby. And subscribe on iTunes. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Spanish yeah. Grand Prix last weekend. That was, yeah. a, that was a good one. Lewis didn't yeah. have that performance. Yeah, we were talking. We were saying. So <laughs> Rosberg, Rosberg out qualified him and out raced him. Oh wow! He couldn't get close. He couldn't get close. Oh to really? Yeah. I, I never got a chance to. I had a three day hangover from the show, so <laughs> it's like Sunday morning. I was like, I don't. I got up at like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Something ridiculous. I didn't get to finish the race till Tuesday, anyway. So. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't get to watch it till like Monday, I think. I watched it or Tuesday even. Actually, actually, yeah, no, Tuesday. I, I watched the race, but it was. Uh, I mean, they, they, they interviewed Martin Brundle after, and he said that he gave it a six out of ten, maybe. Yeah, uh, so that <laughs> he's just like that's, ah, it's a solid six. That's what I said to you after I, I actually I started the race on Monday and finished yeah. on Tuesday. So much. Bullshit going on right now. Yeah, that's why we're here on Friday. <laughs> yeah, we're but, all uh, we're all a little busy. <laughs> but <Mostly> um, <laughs> yeah, I said to you after I saw the start that it was it was close to being like an epic start, and then it just kind of sputtered out. <laughs> but uh, Raikkonen, well, Raikkonen up, had a had a big bit. start. Yeah, Massa yeah. had a pretty good start, and he went off track and kind of, he ruined it for himself. Yeah, I don't know. Bottas did pretty good. Like he he did pretty well. I think this has been like Bottas like finally like his his. Uh, like he's back to like last year's form because I think the first three races or so he was still like well the first race he didn't take part because of his back problem or whatever but yeah. the, the the first few races he was maybe he was still recovering from that and he wasn't all 100% but I think we saw like a very strong performance from Bottas and, and Nico Rosberg I mean love him or hate him he was he actually like he did he, he was untouchable that day that, that, that yeah, race he did it uh, now, does the drama unfold from there between those two? I don't know. Lewis is still on top of the championship. I don't. I. Right. I, I, I. I don't think yeah, uh, he's in the teens of points ahead, like eighteen or something. Oh shit! He's still pretty far ahead. You can't. You can't read too much into it because it could just very well be a one-off thing. Right. But yeah, and there's so many races left too. Like if it's probably gonna almost happen to everybody where you don't finish a race, like to go a whole season and finish every race, mm -hmm. it's nearly impossible. Yeah, you can jump up there. There's gonna be mechanical problems. Somebody might crash into you. Yeah, something I wanted to say about Bottas though. Like the interview after his uh, qualifying, they're like, "Oh, you came in first place or fourth place? How do you feel?" He's like, "Oh, you know, we did pretty good. Like that's <laughs> as good as the, he can fucking do. Yeah, he should be jumping up and down. I came in fourth. He's not gonna. He split the Ferraris, but yeah, uh, Vettel had all the new bobbins on there." <laughs> Which up wait, wait, what, what, what do you have on there? Well, just a this bunch like of upgrades. Big, yeah, big upgrade weekend. Oh, okay. The preseason. All oh, those points that they have, they use them for stuff. Well, I mean, they use uh, a few. Ferrari did. Yeah, Ferrari saving a lot of their of of their tokens, their engine tokens for Canada actually. Oh, and they really? wanna, yeah, they're they're because the next race, Monaco, is not I guess like as demanding on the engine itself, like on top power. Yeah. So they're yeah. probably gonna use the same engine that they've used so far uh, in Monaco, and then start with a brand new engine with tons of new stuff in it for the Canadian Grand Prix, which is a high speed, high like high you, you need the power. Right. Yeah. I see. All right, so okay, since we're talking, let's go into this conspiracy about the fuel flow and what Ferrari actually upgraded. I love conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I th there's a speculation that it was mostly uh, just aerodynamics that they upgraded. Right. The, which is you, you 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 and you can see like if you if you see the pictures. Yeah, I saw of, some comparison pictures. Yeah. The side pods behind the intakes were pretty different. Like. Yeah. I don't know. It's without seeing the actual. Like, they, they added like a few like little wings and little holes here and there. It's tiny, some tiny stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah a lot of it, just little things. But for the race, though, Kimi Raikkonen was driving the old car. Oh, okay. The, all the old arrow. He finished two places back. So I don't know. I guess he still <laughs> kind of made it work for himself. Mm -hmm. But still, so there was speculation. There was a, a directive, I guess, put out by the FIA before the race that they were probably. Or like, look out! They're gonna be checking on your f oh, fuel yeah. flow rate and sensors, and it should be kept under ninety kilograms an hour, because there was some speculation that some team is it at a hundred, hundred k? See, this is what I thought was a hundred, yeah. but what I read 
what I'm, I I didn't get I didn't write the source down. I have a note here. I didn't write the source down, but it w- was said ninety, which I thought it was a hundred. Okay, but I think it's a hundred above ten thousand five hundred RPM. Oh, I see. Yeah. I okay. I think, and then below that it might be ninety for the like to accommodate for the turbo. Is, yeah. Yeah, I guess wow. to get to, you need more fuel to get the revs up. I guess so. They sort of sky anyways. That was the broadcast I watched. Sort of speculated like who knows. What it, what team it could be or whatever, but uh, I think I wrote down a quote here. Br- oh, anyways, Brundle said something about um, it's kind of like cheating. Like right. It's he he didn't suspect that anyone did actually or would actually be doing that because it goes against the spirit, mm. and it's, it's sort of like somebody probably was cheating. Yeah. And he's trying to make him feel bad about it. So I read today from Motorsport.com mm. had an article about. A conspiracy with Mercedes that it was probably Ferrari that had been using some sort of a system that after the fuel flow sensor, Mm -hmm. they were storing fuel or something or pressurizing it and then put letting actually less into the engine than went past the sensor and keeping it there. And then using that as sort of a boost <laughs> reservoir, sort of squeeze it like at the end yeah. for for oh, for when shit. the car like, it, but it was it was, there would be time so that it was like after the corner or, or like on the on the corner exit, just give that extra boost so that the car would have like a better exit off the corner and more right. more power like down the straights. Yeah. So who knows oh, how shit. big? Maybe <laughs> maybe a half or maybe a liter or maybe two liters of a of a tank. Mm-hmm. So technically they weren't cheating. The fuel went through the sensor and then it went into the engine, and there's no rule that says you can't temporarily store it there so but, the, 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 cons- but. the conspiracy comes in saying that mercedes because this directive came out after qualifying during qualifying that mercedes had suspected something that ferrari was doing and had purposefully through their i guess through their software their engine software were shooting more fuel than they were supposed to to bring it to the attention of the fia that oh so uh uh-huh. they're not this technically cheating, but they brought it up to the attention. So <laughs> then the FIA is like, okay, we're going to be keeping an eye on you. Yeah. So that's a conspiracy. That Mercedes figured out what Ferrari was doing. And, and, that, and, and that's and, why and they intentionally like, sort of brought the red flags so that now they're starting scrutineering everybody. Yeah, exactly. Including Ferrari. So <clears throat> then Ferrari was forced to not do what they were doing. And that's the speculation about why they weren't keeping up as much as they have been in the last few races okay that's kind of interesting i buy it yeah so that <laughs> i'm down the sure mercedes mercedes purposefully <laughs> cheated a little bit to bring to the attention that ferrari had found a clever workaround to the rules right which Very technically actually, like honestly technically like, isn't no, no, cheating props, yeah. right yeah <laughs> but if it goes you see how much politics and it's crazy but, man. But, behind but the is- scenes that, that that is the thing because you know you we you saw we, we, we I, when we printed the the big rule book yeah um the rules are there what not but then there's a, a number of technical directives that are issued throughout the year okay um and and those are just as enforceable as any rule and right. and the, the the race director Charlie Whiting can just come and like will like can tell you like listen i know that what you're doing is not sp- like specifically banned by the rules but, but if it goes against the spirit uh, you know against the spirit oh, of the like, rule like which it, is what brundle was kind of talking yeah. about before any of this came out that was his first comment is like come on who's actually doing that because yeah. it's against the spirit of fair yeah. competition right yeah. right yeah. And Ferrari was doing that. I, I doubt, or or the, the, you know, allegedly. <laughs> I doubt the other teams that run Ferrari engines have that system. Installed. Probably not. No. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They get the engine, the block, the the head, mm-hmm. the turbocharger, and the exhaust as a package. I'm sure. Maybe not even the exhaust. And that's up to the team to design the rest, right? The fuel system is not part of the engine. No. Right. No. They but they all get like the the that that uh, that uh, fuel flow meter. They they all get it standard from the FIA. Right, and so, something I remember from the preseason Mike. testing when. Uh, Thank you. Do you mind as well? <laughs> <laughs> Top of my aqua. agua. Um, something that um, Christian Horner said at the start of the season was so these are little electronic fuel flow sensors. Right, flow sensors that they're very small. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, the fuel- and, they, and it's sonic. It works like. It doesn't yeah, actually it's like it's ultrasonic. Yeah. yeah, it sends like a radio wave through, and it picture it somehow 
from the reading on the other side measures how many particles of fuel are going through there. Yeah, it, or, but it measures the mass, not the volume. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's the mass, which I guess is calculating based on the temperature, etc. Because the mass changes on temperature. Right. No, but maybe the volume, or changes. maybe they just figure out a way to like just measure mass. I guess. <laughs> well, it was what he had said was that. He didn't specifically say that they were doing it, Horner, that right. Red Bull was doing it, but that some teams that he knew were buying cases of thousands of these <laughs> sensors because they're made in a factory somewhere and they're not 100% perfect, that one of them might be 1% off or yeah. inaccurate, yeah. and they're looking for one that's slightly inaccurate to give them that extra yeah. tiny little bit of edge. Right? Yeah. You, want, you want one that's reading less fuel than it's going through. Because oh, it, it, it must be, it must be <laughs> incredibly complex to, like, to, 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 to measure the mass, and that's, that, that is the thing, right? Yeah. Nasty mushroom. Oh, oh. It's back. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why and, and there's there's all kinds of uncertainties. In, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. All right. doesn't want to be there. Um, all kinds of uncertainties. And, 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 and I'm sure like the different, like just the, the, the construction of the thing, if it's maybe a little bit off or whatever, like it it, it can probably throw the measurement up or down, right? Like I, yeah, I think for these... Sure. Uh, when they were talking about how like how much uncertainty uh, one one percent is an extra kilo yeah right exactly <laughs> over <laughs> over like the, the the whole race distance maybe yeah yeah exactly yeah so and and, and there were I, th I think that when they first introduced this system last year they were talking about like Thanks, maybe oh thank you um maybe like upwards or up to five percent on either side wow. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a lot I don't know. Another big story this weekend was pit stops. What the hell was going on in the pits this weekend? Oh Jesus! What? Yeah, it what did happen? Crazy man! I think there's like a curse, and uh, I have a oh yeah, few guys got what hit by the cars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like exactly. I have a small. Well, it's obviously not a real conspiracy, but there's been a lot of trouble this season with the back left tire. Yeah, for all teams on different races, That's true. different cars. There were two at least this weekend on the back left tire. Yeah, mm. conspiracy is the car comes in. Yeah, that back left tire man is directly in the middle of the camera. You know what I mean, it looks good on TV. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a little excitement. It's never the front tire; you can barely see what they're doing, yeah. or the other side. Where there's five it's or, the one five that's yeah. there. It's the one that's right there. You can see what the guys do. Like, I'm trying to get the tire on there. Or Shit, get the bolt get stuck or whatever. Yeah. Well. But, Ill Illuminati. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's funny though, like because well, no, what happened to Alonso, right? Yeah, and it, it eventually turned out to be one of his tear offs. His tear and well. you were even talking like we were like at the beginning. I'm sure one of the first few podcasts we were like saying like, yo, what if that goes into the brake duct? Yeah. Do, okay, I think it uh, it did. It did. That's what that's what our caused wild speculation. How wild <laughs> you ended up with something? I didn't say this at the yeah, time it, because there was <laughs> no point. It it just would have seemed like I was talking shit. We were watching the spa race. Uh -huh. I, th I think no, I couldn't. I don't think it was last year because I was away. I think it was two years ago, at spa. And I'm, th I think it might have been Raikkonen. You remember one of them went into a brake duct, and uh, the same same thing happened. That the right one of the tires overheated. You're I think right. it was the front brake. But it was the front. You're right. Okay, on that watching that race, I remember thinking like. Five or ten minutes before, but it wasn't. It was, it was like somebody else's. It was somebody else's. For, yeah. yeah. Well, if it's in the front, it has to right. be somebody yeah. else. Who, like again, how do they <laughs> know that was so Alonso's? much turbulation <laughs> and weird air currents? It could have just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got in front. Oh, I don't know how they know that was Alonso's, and I'm, they're probably gonna start putting a mark on them or something to know from now on. Yeah, it just says like a signature on it. But I remember <laughs> watching that spa race and seeing somebody tear them off, and you always see the drivers. Go like this, and then they like, and they let go because you don't want it to go into your air intake either. No, right. It's not going to stop the car, but it's going to block some of your airflow. Yeah, it might not give you full performance. The brake obviously ruins the performance. But I remember seeing that and thinking, as it like, what if that went in somebody's brake? And then it did on that race. But I didn't bother saying that I was thinking that before. Yeah. So you'd be like, no, you weren't. No, you, but yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. like it a happened white again. Miss Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> it happened again. That's what happened. He almost ran Buddy over. Yeah, because it, he way it, overshot the. That dude got out of the way though. Oh yeah, he knew. Like he's he obviously, and that and that's I guess like when you when you can tell that like 
you know, who, who's an experienced pit, like, you know, who, who's, who's, who's like, got experience in your <laughs> yeah. pit career and whatnot. This guy, like, obviously, like, saw, like, okay, Alonso's not, definitely not slowing down. I've got a piece. Yeah, like, yeah, he, get out of and he, yeah he got out of the way, We're, like, just in time, but he did. He, like, he, he was able to to see that. Whereas the guy that they had a Lotus, well, actually, no, but. but yeah, uh, he got smashed in the dick by a carjack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, 50 kilometers an hour at least. Yeah. That was <laughs> quick, man. He flew dick. back, like, yeah, uh, four or five that. meters. Yeah, that was insane. They they, they showed him. They showed him on the pit lane, like just holding a bag of ice. <laughs> on his yeah. Boss. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll like, get the camera. Like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's apparently fine though. He's uh, he, he's he's fine. <laughs> yeah, I remember, um, I think it was the fastest of the race. Vettel had a, like a two point three second stop, almost breaking the record. What's the record? It's two point one. It's gotta be yeah. Is it in the ones? I don't know. I that was a quick so. though. That was a quick. They showed that stop on repeat. I remember yeah. that like even like two or three years ago um, is when they first started smashing the, the three second barrier. You remember like this was this it, this has been new. This two this sub three second pit stops <laughs> is a new thing. We'll get into and this. Teams are getting crazy. That's over. Yeah. In 2017. Oh yeah. oh yeah. We'll talk about this soon. But uh, what else happened in this race? Um, Something is really wrong with Nico Rosberg's eye. He mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when he talked about having um, maxi, pad. maxi pads <laughs> on his uh, forehead to keep the sweat out of his eyes. And he's like, oh, it bugs my eye. And he had, like his eye was a bit red. Yeah. I thought it was like maybe he scratched it or something. But yeah. it looks like he has something seriously wrong with his eye. Like Shit, yeah, the whole inside notice. of his eye. You didn't notice? No, no. Watch, man. Like, his eye is fucked up. <laughs> that was already like a month ago when he mentioned it. That's true. Two yeah. races back or maybe three. Maybe got one of those visor things in his eye. Yeah. Just like a little piece. So if you can look Air at like currents. look up just Google like Nico Rosberg left eye or something. You'll see a picture of it for sure. Somebody else has probably blogged about it somewhere. Yeah. Uh what else happened? Vettel had a long stop too, right? He had a bad one. Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't I mean it wasn't crazy. It, they just they should have in my opinion, they should have tried to do the undercut. Ferrari shouldn't have left Vettel out. They should have brought Vettel in uh, oh, when shit. he was battling yeah. with with Hamilton, which is like one of the things that and, and I've I've kind of noticed that even from back in the Alonso days. Yeah, see, it? it's like it's like into his like retinal area. Oh shit! Yeah, I never noticed that. He like briefly mentioned it when he was talking about keeping the sweat out of his oh, eyes, shit. and then I've no, like been noticing it. It's not good. It looks. I bad. know. I know it's small in here, but I we have the thing in the way. Especially like after the race when he's all like sweaty and red or whatever. Like, doesn't look good. Oh, fuck. Dude, it's like cutting into <laughs> the green part of his eye into yeah. his retina. Yeah, that's the, something is bad. Weird. Yeah. I had never noticed that. I don't know. Yeah. He didn't say what it was. I don't know. I don't know what it, what, what it is, but it doesn't look good. Yeah. Even this. I know it's shadow, but it looks. Maybe he's just hot and sweaty because he's in a fucking Formula One car. Yeah. No, man, his eyes like that now. Something's wrong with it forever. Yeah. Well, it's been like a month at least since he mentioned it. Mm. Yeah, I didn't notice until he said it himself. But true. No, that 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 doesn't look. Hopefully, good. <laughs> as much as uh, I'm not a fan of him really, but <laughs> hopefully that doesn't affect his car- his racing career. Yeah, like that's bad. We need a, we need Nico Rosberg to at least like keep Hamilton in check every once in a while. You know what I mean? Like he, he's stu- he's stuck there. I mean, <laughs> you know, Rosberg is stuck there, and Hamilton is is good. It's apparently he's ninety what ninety what what do they say ninety six point four percent closer to to signing the contract. Did you hear that? I think yes. Yeah, so somebody some ridiculous yeah, percentage. Yeah, somebody I, th- I think he uh, drops a single uh, first. Uh, who who was it? Okay, so you know how the, the big bosses of Mercedes are. I, it's Total Wolf and then the, the short British guy. What's his name? Uh, Fuck it. His name is like escapes me right now. Anyway, whatever. Like he, I, can't I think it was he that said. Get <laughs> picture him. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Um, he, he, I think he was the one that said that. Yeah, we're ninety six point four percent there. <laughs> how do you just how do you <laughs> quantify <laughs> the numbers too much? <laughs> Or, <laughs> how do you quantify like that sort of yeah I don't, it, to that detail yeah so they're missing like roughly four percent off of signature like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like almost done yeah 
<laughs> something in the uh, post race in the press conference. One thing I don't get is the Thursday press conference is basically freely available. It's thrown on YouTube all the time. Yeah, no, but the, it's not. The drivers and the constructors conferences, you can watch them. Yes. But the post race one, they never show it. It's and it's usually only like ten minutes. Right. They never show it. They just they don't have, even they show just, it on Sky. Have, even. Yeah, exactly. They don't. Yeah. They, they'll have Ted come and just be like, oh, just came back from the meeting. Blah blah. Said this and this. And he says like one thing. It's Danny holding it's like, a banana yeah, as a microphone oh, scale. A, there's a microphone right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Touche. This. Uh, oh, what are you guys looking forward to uh, coming up in Monaco? And Rosberg was like, oh, I could, um, I can just uh, ride my bike or take my scooter down to the track because he lives there. Yeah. He's like, yeah, sleeping in my own bed, which I guess must be nice. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You don't yeah. have to stay in the hotel and all this. Yeah. And Hamilton said he was looking forward to the girls. Of course he is. But is, <laughs> but is his mind in the right place? <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what it goes with back his, to what you said before about yeah, him. With music career and hanging, hanging out, out, with out with in Las Vegas. At the uh, the Kardashians' house for an Easter dinner, yeah. <laughs> and you know what the Pacquiao God. fight. She, maybe he's getting he's everywhere. Now. Vegas weekend, but, but that's the and and obviously, I mean, all credit to him. I mean, uh, he's, a, he's a kid from like basically like very very uh, uh, working class neighborhood in mm -hmm. somewhere in in, in, in what where, where is he from? Like Essex or what? I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, I don't, I don't know in, somewhere in England. Mm -hmm. uh, and now he's a millionaire, and he owes his pri pri old private jet. I'm sure that you would also, and he's single now, so you would get tempted to, you know, go out and <laughs> and, and, and live the Hollywood life. But but is is not it even Hollywood much? life? It's just baller life. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's beyond millionaire. He's a multi multi millionaire. Yeah. How yeah. How much money do you think he has? Tens, tens, of tens millions. of millions. Yeah, in the, in the tens. In, it probably in the mid to high tens now. Yeah. Shit. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, and yeah, it's crazy. He's so like, even if he right. bombed the rest of his F1 career, he would be but not not the way he's spending his dollars yeah. so yeah. frivolously. I mean, yeah, then you don't need to even. If someone gave me like a half million dollars right now, I doubt I would need to work again. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just live keep, off. Of keep interest. this lifestyle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the lifestyle I have. <laughs> yeah, just don't change it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you go out drinking a few times a week, but fucking that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'd stretch that out. <laughs> yeah, like fifty million. What do you, yeah, <laughs> he has that's, his own jet. That's enough money to like that he paid the cherry a red. Small nation, you know, like very small. Yeah, very you small. could do something. Very, true, that's true. Very like some infrastructure for sure. Yeah, build absolutely. some schools and shit. <laughs> yeah. That was on Reddit a few days ago. Some guy yeah. was like, I think he was like in Florida, and he just gave money to his community and like. It's just, education went up, like built schools, like all these neighborhood things. It's actually so like if you if you like ever uh, if you're into that that kind of stuff, uh, mm -hmm. uh, engineers without borders. They have like on their website, like it's it's all about like little little projects like that that would take, relatively speaking, very little money mm -hmm. that could completely change communities. Oh, and it's shit. actually surprising, like the like how little like like. How how little money in the grand scheme of things would it take to actually completely turn so many people's lives around? Yeah, it's 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 just one of those interesting things. Like it's something like like a quarter or less than uh, whatever the U.S. spends on their uh, national defense could completely eradicate poverty. But <laughs> oh, yeah, but they're, hey. they're spending six and seven hundred <laughs> billion dollars a year on defense. Yeah, which is really offense. Well, uh, everyone knows a good defense is a better offense. No, that's you got it wrong. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, the point stays. Back to F one. Um, cool news. <laughs> Blasted with decibels. <laughs> Don't worry, you can normalize Bang! that. <laughs> yeah, um, it'll be normalized. It shall be. Um, <laughs> testing happened after after uh, Barcelona. Okay, wait, wait, I got one or two more for. Oh, Barcelona. true, true, true. Go, go for it. Against my rear left pit stop theory, <laughs> Button's front right was sparked, and his tire, his tire changed. They had a, they had a big problem yeah. there. Oh wait, no, yeah, there's still lots of the, we haven't even mentioned that the, the Maldonado thing. <laughs> yeah, I got I got uh, this. Can can we just get on here the camera view? Just uh, so I can yeah. center this. I've i basically I filmed my television during the post race because I wanted to get this clip easily. So let's try to use your microphone to 
pick up the sound from this. Now I just turned the screen off. <laughs> I, just, I just got like a, a 10 second video here that I recorded on my phone. So, Maldonado and his teammate Grosjean, yeah. they bumped wheels. Yeah. Pretty much. That, 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 that's what it looked like. They bumped Bump. wheels. It wasn't a good camera angle of it, but they showed it on the virtual eye that they were yeah. like, in, the wheels were kind of like inside each other on the virtual eye. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Oh, it's not real. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. I, it's I like they it. use like a video game kind of thing to like recreate the camera angles and right, fly okay. around them. Oh, yeah. sick, cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah, on the on the three D, it showed that basically what happened is that they they bumped wheels, mm. and um, as a consequence of that of, of of that accident, but not a direct consequence. It didn't happen right away. But something something must have you know the force must have communicated through the car in such a way that just watch this it's it's pretty weird yeah, yeah. So i think this was on the next lap possibly two laps later but i think it was the next lap um maldonado was making a pass with the drs open on the front straight mm -hmm. and we'll see here i filmed this in slow mo super slow motion on my television so it's gonna sound weird ready yeah Oh, it does sound super weird. But okay, check check out the wing. Yeah, look at this wing. I'll get the phone even closer. Oh, there you go. Boom. Did you see the pieces fly yeah. out? Oh, the, the webcam went out of focus. Okay, let me, let me do this quickly one more time. Ready? Oh, no. Boom. Boom, and there it goes. Do you see the back, where, back right pillar of his wing collapsed there? Let's try this one more time. Either way, well, crazy shit. Talk, just, like it, 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 it like so. He, he, here's the two pillars of the wing. Like, yeah. Just this one, just kind of like went like this and collapsed under pressure. Oh. And boom! Oh, so you see that? Yeah, yeah, as yeah. soon as the DRS flap came down, yeah. something happened. It destabilized something in, in the internal loads of. Yeah, just so much wind pressure at 300 oh, yeah. kilometers an hour. Just, boom! Yeah. Boom. He broke it. So and his wing his wing was just kind of flop, flopping like this. And instead, instead of, of was that Maldonado? Yeah. That was Maldonado. <laughs> yeah, he did. I has no <laughs> fucking luck. Yeah, he, would like, like, he, he needs to drop that number thirteen, man. I'm with you now. <laughs> so I was saying see the Mad Max. Oh you missed it. They're, oh yeah. They were yeah, advertising yeah, we were Mad Max ad. Yeah. Yeah, you think it's because of thirteen? <laughs> Danny has been saying that for a that while. That was my theory. Well, we're all we're all about wild speculation. Yeah, here it's the thirteen. He needs to drop that. <laughs> but yeah. actually, no, he's stuck with it for the rest of his career. Unlucky thirteen. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. You can't change your number. No, I think I think not. Unless you're the champion, then yeah, you can. Then you. you could be number one if you want. Unless you're too cool, like Lewis Hamilton. Oh, Lewis Hamilton kept his number. Yeah, he uh, kept the forty-four. Who, yeah. who did well, go he to tattooed one? it on the side of his head, so <laughs> <laughs> he has Fucking to. Christ, yeah. He should put one behind his other ear, I guess. <laughs> and he could go back and forth. Um. So yeah. And it, so but they they let him continue to race though. When he came in for the pit stops after after that happened, he came in and did a pit stop, and the the crew just like. Just, Tore that that side, yeah. So he was still like he had like sort of a three three quarters of a wing still. <laughs> uh, but isn't that like if you knowingly know that uh, it's broken and you send him out, that could cause a crash, isn't oh, that? Oh, oh yeah, and that's what a they couple get for that? a few a few laps later they did retire him. I think that that's why uh, yeah. the the stewards didn't didn't penalize them right. as a team. But if they had let him continue to raise, and he like and if he had wing caused, collapsed, yeah, yeah or, or or either the full wing collapsed or he had caused an accident, yeah, then yeah, like, the stewards would have oh, gone wow. like you know let rain hail on them, <laughs> yeah. Well, if yeah, uh, if, if if he had caused an accident, come on, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was going to in that, yeah. But, yeah so, somehow he was actually. <laughs> It was actually being competitive still, though. The you, no, up until it didn't up seem until to then, affect he, the car too much. Up until then, it was like he well, he had the race, like one of the best races of his career. Really? Yeah. He has he he does have one win under his under his belt, right? Like he, right. he's won a race one, and he like it was that race. It was Barcelona. So maybe something about the circuit he likes. Yeah. Um, but he was doing pretty well. Yeah. He um, what was I gonna say? He um. Sorry, after they showed that, they showed another clip of the wing like coming uh, down the main straight, and it was kind of like going like this, 
And as soon as you hit the brakes to slow down, it popped back up. Yeah. Like the wind was just bending it, bending it. <laughs> as soon as he stopped, like it popped back up. Yeah. yeah, no, it was noticeable. Like once once they pointed it out, yeah. Um but all uh, I think that after that, there wasn't much in terms of I was retired. Because of that, because of the the thing with his brakes, yeah, his brakes, yeah, yeah, they had to retire him. Yeah, he, the the, the brakes in the back were completely toast. Like you just couldn't. You if oh, if you wanted right. to, if you wanted to like completely replace the whole the whole part, like you you, you just couldn't do it. Wow, with poor Alonzo, man, yeah. he hasn't had a great season. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, do I know feel, he's your favorite. Well, I do feel bad for him because yeah. the way the, the way things are looking, and remember how we said that. Um, uh, or uh, Joe Sayward, yeah, uh, F one journalist extraordinaire. He he said that by 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 the end of Spain uh, of the Spanish Grand Prix, you can pretty much tell how the rest of the year roughly is going to be going. Right. If this is how McLaren is going to be, yeah. Uh, and and all credit to them. I mean, it seems like they have been more reliable than before, and and they are improving some things. But I I don't know, like. If they're gonna, if, I don't know if they're doing it fast enough. Right. And if this is how the rest of the year is gonna be going, like, yeah, poor Alonso, man. Like, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I. Well, it would, it wouldn't, like, McLaren wouldn't back out of F one because of that. No, would McLaren, it? McLaren will not right. back out of F one. Right. McLaren is gonna be in F one until the end of days for <laughs> F one. <laughs> yeah, as as far as far as you can tell, they're they, they're they're too invested because not only do they have the team, but they also provide uh, the electronic control units for all of the teams. Uh, and they they do they do a lot of things actually, like that. Okay, actually, for a lot, we talk, I think so, we talked about this a bit a few yeah. weeks ago. That McLaren actually provides the computer systems for a lot of racing series, mm -hmm. including NASCAR. They're 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 oh, yeah. So they're, they're, they're really well. Their te their technology side is like it's big and like okay. they're, they're they're like a in terms of motorsports that they're, they're known for like okay. for for. for, for having like the applied technologies that many right. of them use like if it's a standardized uh electronic control unit yeah. in any racing series out there there's a high chance that it will be a mclaren and honda as well they've keep reiterating that they are in formula one for the long haul and they will be there forever now mm -hmm. they yeah. said they will be there forever e even 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 after the, there was a bit of a scare where, or like people were saying that because um, uh, uh, Honda internally just had a bit of restructuring in terms yeah. of their uh, top management. That's right. because, that's because I believe it was the C the president or CEO was in some big corruption scandal, <laughs> so they, he was replaced. But the new guys also like said like no yeah we're if anything we're 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 gonna dump even more money into F one. <laughs> yeah, and you just said the other day they're still targeting a podium by Silverstone. And a win by the end of the year, I believe he said. Like Silverstone is in, a, is in a few races. I don't know if a podium is. In, but I put. I could no. I know that a podium it's is like not in realistic. Three, isn't it? Yeah, it's after Canada. After it Canada, back to England. Yeah. Right? but yeah. Honda is. Honda is just with McLaren. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they only oh, have, I remember that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah they only have one customer for now. Up. Yeah. Right, they but have, they have to do some performance before anyone else buys their right. engines. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're predicting a podium. In three races, at know. Silverstone, which is also another track where you use a lot of power and acceleration. And the thing is that the it's two races that are track. coming up, uh, Monaco and Canada, they're just so different it, from yeah. each other. Like the the it, it, they're, they're kind of uh, people, I guess, call it like the wild cards, the wild cards, because they're side by side and they have been for. Well, for many time, for many years, right? And, and and Monaco is just the demands for the car. It's basically like the completely opposite uh, that you can expect for Canada. Yeah, I think Canada is the most acceleration, right? The most raw, just pure acceleration. Uh, it's in the top three. Yeah, it's like I believe in, in top speed is, and it's is the highest, Monza highest or second highest top speed? Second yeah, second highest. Second highest after Monza, the temple of speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and but you just laughed, but, but that's what it's called. heavy braking. <laughs> yeah. Down the, the, yeah, the is, down it, the hairpin. It's a, yeah, right? it's a like, lot of the, that the heavy braking and then accelerating. Yeah. Again. Whereas whereas Monaco, you don't you don't ever like reach like full throttle. You're not you're not like a high power. You mm -hmm. your car like the demand of the car it's is like super, high downforce. Uh -huh. Yeah. You see the they're gonna show up there with fat wings on the cars. Yeah. And and, and for Canada, like they show up with like these tiny little wings. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're <laughs> back, the back wing, like where the DRS flap is. Yeah. Like two inches or something. Whereas you see in Monaco will be four or five inches. Yeah. Like a huge, oh, huge yeah. rig. Yeah. 
Cause and they're they're allowed to change that. Oh yeah, from, yeah. from race to race, it's it's a, the, right. it's, it's Formula you One <laughs> fucking points or coins for that shit. As, as long a- aerodynamics, as, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. As long okay. as the aerodynamics fit within the box of the regulations, ah, of the dimensions okay. that are allowed, they could change it anything they want to do from race yeah. to race. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can put on, put on or take off or whatever you want. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see. You'll see a big difference. Yeah. And uh, so, Monaco, you want to look at this uh, yeah, traffic yeah, yeah, in yeah, traffic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I this... found this this morning. Anyone that uses Reddit uh... probably saw it as well. Two more? Yeah, this guy. So this is uh, downtown driving the Monaco lap in Monte Carlo with traffic. Yeah. And you just enjoy I, I this. Thought, I thought enjoy that this, this was really cool. I've seen this before, but a couple of years ago. I haven't seen it for a long time. I'm still no well versed in, in my Monaco corners, but I think, okay, so this is. This is a big uphill. B- yeah, Beau Rivage, I believe. Oh, the names? I don't yeah, know. yeah. I never, <laughs> that's one thing I never bothered to learn at any track, really. It don't, I don't know. I don't know do the they, names. Do they I know the numbers for some of them, but. Repaint the no. streets at all? Uh, like is, there's all this, like. Oh, I think so. I think they, yeah. they put some temporary stuff over those uh, white lines. To cover them, like some temporary grip. I think, yeah, I th- and and, but not not all of it. I think you, it, on, on the race you can still see like these like zebras and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I was saying to Jay this morning. Look at all the concrete planters. There's trees dividing the lanes and stuff. <laughs> that's all. That, yeah, that's all gotta be taken off. So they come <coughs> down this. Yeah, area. see all of that. Yeah, all the, yeah, yeah, even the steps on the restaurant there they yeah, come all down these, all, that's these, why all these ballards i didn't realize know. those steps on the left there at that restaurant that's why it's so bumpy when they come down that straight they swing to the right and swing back left True. You go, they take out all those barriers there because they oh, drive okay, up yeah. on that curb all oh, this is missing yeah. all that in the center there because that's part of the track that's part of the runoff yeah. the tunnel oh and then so there's good. a tunnel oh yeah. man monaco is awesome tunnel. oh <laughs> yeah. what yeah. that's so cool <laughs> yeah Oh As, man. Okay, since you haven't seen this before, yeah. while we're ta- when we're talking in a minute, see if you can find a hot lap of this in track form that we can look at. A hot what? Like a, a, a video of a Formula One car flying through this. You can go hear the left oh, right. Man. It, th- see, that there is all completely cleared out. <laughs> And then I saw a few months going ago. Going into the here, the prince built his like car garage right over here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that, that there is the prince's personal vehicle garage. That's now. a that's a public swimming pool. La piscine. La pi- the, yeah, see all, all these, all this, all, all that plans. has to be all, gone, gone, yeah, gone, gone. There's gone. a runoff there. There's <laughs> fences yeah. here. There's a big crazy corner. They even changed the steering block at this track because of this final two corner part here. It's so tight that they have to turn the steering wheel more than any other track. Just that's, this track. That's nuts. It's pretty yeah, nuts. Can, you know what? Actually, just yeah, just type here like oh, uh, Monaco qualifying lap. Uh, it's nope. M O N A C. Yeah. You usually have to go to Daily Motion for these because YouTube is too strict about. Uh, there you go. Qualifying or onboard. There we go. 2005. We got yeah, a nice loud fast one. Oh. Let's get some volume. Yeah. Hey, we're watching this on on YouTube. Just if anybody, you know, curious. Yeah. Yeah. So going up this. Holy oh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. Go left, yeah. left. You go right. Consistent himself in qualifying. We need one on board. We'll do a proper like breakdown of a lap. Okay, next next week yeah, we'll get deeper into Monaco for the for the Monaco preview. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, but it's not it's not this week. It's next. Yeah, the beach, which is the tobacco yeah. corner. So yeah, have all the still the street. We go through the tunnel. Oh, neat. Underneath the yeah. Lowe's Hotel. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> man! <laughs> yeah. so Heavy cool. breaking. Oh, look at this Into fucking chicane, stupid turn. Yeah. That's a Noval chicane, I believe. The oh, really? There was a bad accident there a couple of years ago. With uh, uh, Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Paris. He was unconscious from that, wasn't he? Yeah. And he almost got crushed by his own tire. <laughs> yeah. That was really close to him. How close they get this to is, the wall? This is even with the old pit lane. Oh, yeah. 2005. True. They moved the pit lane to there now. Plus, yeah, it's on the inside. That's Alonso's championship year. Here he comes across the line. Is this provision? Yeah. Oh yes, it certainly Half a is. Second. It was what so a quick. super lap from Fernando <laughs> Alonso, and that's the kind of lap time we Marco were seeing so this morning. Yeah, next week, next week we'll get some proper onboards and yeah. yeah, show how badass it is. See if we can get some historic footage too. How it looks. Oh, the, this, like way back. The there there is an onboard uh, that Senna did. 
Like, oh oh my god, that video is that. classic, man. I've watched that yeah. 20, 25 times. <laughs> the, yeah, the, uh, the Senna on board on the MP4-4. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I think back then they didn't have those cameras running the whole race no. all the time. They're like, we're going to put one on just for the qualifying yeah. to show how cool it is. And they got one I, lap of that whole weekend and that's it. I think that when he, and when he, call, when he goes in the tunnel, like he loses reception and like the screen oh, goes yeah. all like... Even until, like, like, <laughs> until five or six years ago, it was yeah. like that. It would just be like... <laughs> <laughs> just, the cameras were just cut out. Yeah, yeah. Or once they, and once they get up to super like 300 kilometers an hour, it starts distorting too. Because oh right, they're yeah, going yeah. almost yeah uh, like faster than yeah, their speed radio of waves. That, what? <laughs> 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 the speed of light. Yeah, faster than the old radio be. technology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> transmit. But, so uh, man, that's fun thing to look forward to. Oh, this is a, definitely so Monaco is gonna is a nice is a good race to watch too. Oh, you know what? While we're doing this too, we can close one more of these links. I think the second from the left there. Here, this one? Oh, this yeah. one. What's going on? That's oh. Oh, the, oh, there we go. This oh, is the yeah. long-term forecast for uh, Monte Carlo. Oh, fingers crossed. Look at that. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, calling for rain. That's awesome. We haven't had, <laughs> we haven't had rain in Monaco in a while. Like years. I couldn't even tell you the last yeah. time. Yeah. It could be intense. I know that it's if it rains in Monaco, it's it's it's, it's a deal breaker. <laughs> like yeah, you could a, you could you could even like even say that a McLaren could score some points. <laughs> so everybody, careful likes, what you say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> everybody wants to live there. All the rich people because they get like three hundred fifty sunny days a year. It's just beautiful. Yeah, all but but it has rained uh, and during the Monaco Grand Prix before. It's not it's not unheard of. Oh, I'm sure it's just it very has. unlikely. I couldn't name I a specific time that it did, but I'm sure. When um I'm sure it has. Uh, the, well, on like during Senna's uh first year in F1, I believe, um when he was racing for Tolman, Tolman would be like the modern day equivalent of uh I'd say a, a Sauber or 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 even a Marussia. Uh, so a complete back marker, but it rained in Monaco, and like that was like the first time that like people were like, "Yo, Senna is a, is a big deal," because he went from like all the way back where he qualified to second. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> On the, just That's because crazy. it was raining and like he just was the one that had the balls to like drive Go the shit it. out of the, the car. Master, yeah. 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 The ultimate field driver. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. But I, it, it is it could it could and especially in in the track like Monaco, mm -hmm. uh, where people are gonna be going like just so slow and 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 the downforce and whatever is what matters. Um, if it rains, it's another game. It's yeah, it's just, it's just gonna jumble everything up. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Crazy. Yeah. You want to talk about this uh, news leak that happened the other day before we get into oh, the, yeah. the before okay. we get into the big news? Because we we I think we've been speculating on this for a while, and I've been personally curious. Um, yeah, I know you have especially the Ferrari special deal. And all. Yeah, right. Like yeah, like how much is that? Uh, how much is that special treatment that the Ferrari gets? Because uh, okay, so it turns uh, out it's uh, a lot. <laughs> Formula One gets you know on on top of. The, the money that the teams get from um, uh, from their own sponsorship deals and whatnot. Yeah. Um, F1 as a sport gets like tons of money from <coughs> advertising and, and just selling uh, TV rights, TV rights and whatnot. Right. You know, uh, merchandising insurance. and shit like that. Yeah. Selling well, the rights, actually, to actually the hosting rights. Actually, right. actually merchandising like is actually uh, the teams make money from merchandising like their own shit. But oh, okay. Um, <coughs> but the commercial rights is obviously like I was being kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> is is and it's all managed by Bernie Eccleston. That's what Bernie. That's what Bernie does. He's uh -huh. he he got he's a commercial rights holder. He's he, he, he well for through his web of companies right. um he, he he's tasked with the uh, he's charged with the task of extracting as much money out of like the sport uh, as can be done and then he takes some of that money uh and keeps it for himself right <laughs> to make his companies work and whatnot yeah and uh he gives uh, some other to the teams and how that's distributed is usually very secretive um right and it always is it, al it always is <laughs> that's uh, so fucked. yeah very very secretive and nobody knows that it's it's it's, a, it's very confidential and shit right. somebody leaked that of, of like how much they got last year no. each team a key thing to remember about bernie ecclestone though is that he's currently on trial in germany for corruption and bribery or is, is it just bribery 
No, I, well, I, I thought more, they, <laughs> they, 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 they dropped obvious, all that. Obviously correct. Didn't they drop all that? Because he paid, like, he gave him like a hundred million. I thought there was some sort of yeah, ongoing appeals. And they're, yeah, like that. they're trying to appeal it. I don't. Yeah, his case he's, is not he's, fully he's closed. He's mostly gotten away with it, but he was yeah. facing jail time for yeah. for whatever it was, bribery. Yeah, it was, yeah, bribery. He, it was bribery. He, he paid off a hundred million dollars. <laughs> So he gave the Germans under million, and they oh kind of dropped God. the charges. Oh. So he he, he <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's that rich. Yeah. Well, no, actually, one of one of his quotes after he did that, he's like, he's like, you know what? I really like this capitalist system. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe I had to pay a hundred million dollars, but you know what? It would be worse if I didn't have a hundred million dollars to spare. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad. Yeah. He's, <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. Uh, but no. Yeah. So so that that is actually uh, no. no. One, one more over. Go all the way down. Yeah. There's a chart here, so we can. Yeah. Look at that. Oh but to be honest, I thought that um, that Ferrari was gonna get like because because every, everybody has been saying for a while like oh look at this sweet deal you know like like it, the rumors are like oh look at like Ferrari gets like a, a super sweet deal mm -hmm. out of F1 and yeah I mean they are the team that gets the most money um but like why is Red Bull up there I don't know their premium is they've they as well as Ferrari Red Bull has negotiated a special premium because yeah. look they came in second and Williams came in third place last year mm -hmm. Williams received 83 million dollars Red Bull Racing received one hundred fifty-six million dollars, yeah. almost twice as much for coming one oh, place yeah. higher. Oh, for and sure, if you they go, have a sweet, a sweet sweetheart deal for sure. And to repeat, Williams got eighty-three million dollars for third place. Ferrari came in fourth overall in the constructors' championship, got one hundred sixty-four million dollars, which is double. Yeah, it's two million short of double Williams, and Red Bull almost also got almost double. Yeah, what the fuck's going on? Mercedes, the winners, the champions. Yeah. Got one hundred twenty-six million dollars. Because they don't have a sweet third deal. amount. Of, yeah, yeah, the third amount of money. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 it, it, it's very crazy. very very crazy. Um, <laughs> I mean, but uh, there's there's a few obviously there's a few things that we don't understand. But um, Ferrari, I mean, they they demand the most money out of out of out of the commercial right holders because in their eyes they say they're the ones that bring. The most amount of people to the most amount of races, right? right. Uh, and 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 you a lot and you of do red see flags it. at every race. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've been in there since the beginning. Yeah, they've they never quit. They've never left. Yeah, Ferrari is Formula One. Formula One is Ferrari. They, they, there's the saying that there wouldn't be a Formula One as we know it without Ferrari. If right. Ferrari ever left, so they they have that bargaining chip, and right. they always have had it. Yeah, a lot of teams but, over but, the years but, have but left. But Red Bull, I mean, well, what is Red Bull's bargaining chip? <laughs> Actual I don't, I don't know, liquid man. Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I think we made Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, that guy the drink. M Mateschitz is obviously a ridiculously strong businessman. Oh yeah, like he he made a billion dollar company out of a drink. Yeah, but and they sponsor every extreme sport in the world, including dozens that you've never even heard of. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually like. Dirty. Yeah, no, it, it it's crazy the, for sure. But you know. You know how uh, Christian Horner is is being groomed to be the next Bernie Ecclestone. There, there, there See, must be some is, sort. I of... learned this from Five Lights. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't known or realized that. Yeah, and 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 listen, that maybe there is some some sort of backroom dealing there as well, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, maybe like buddy buddy, like oh yeah, I'll give you, I give your team like so much more cash. And, and that could happen because that that, yeah. that is that is kind of the way that Bernie conducts his business. It's very, very like you know, my you sh my handshake is my bond, and like you right. know, you if you, you you take care of me, I take care of you. <laughs> you scratch my back, I'll suck your dick. Yeah, nineties <laughs> hip hop, where does bond? Yeah, Drew <laughs> <laughs> said that in all kinds of songs. Yeah, exactly. That's Maybe that's a lyric from uh, Biggie Smalls. No, I. Nas, Lewis, Nas said Lewis, that a lot, a lot by a lot of Lewis rappers Hamilton, in the nineties. His new yeah. song, <laughs> "Where's <is> Bond?" <laughs> He's bringing yeah, it back. He'll, he'll just take it. He's Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure that Red Bull's got that because of uh, Mattishitz. Like, if if anyone doesn't know the story, this guy is it Dieter or Dietrich? Uh, Mattishitz. Uh, it's not Dieter. It's Dankeschön. Dietrich. Dietrich, Dietrich yeah. Mattishitz. He's, I'm not sure the full story, but he came in contact with this guy 
from Thailand. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't remember his name. I should look it up here. I'll tell you in a second. Wild speculation. It's not wild speculation. This is a, the true <laughs> story the of true Red story. Bull. It was invented by a man in Thailand. Okay. Who he was like some sort of farmer or something like this. He invented this Red Bull drink and uh, he sold it and he made a lot of money in Thailand, which right. is a fairly poor country. His name is Chelo Uvidya. I believe that he died the richest man in Thailand because he met Dieter Mateschitz. He used to Dietrich, Dietrich Mateschitz. <laughs> he used to sell it within Thailand to truckers and you know people that work night shifts and stuff. Yeah. It was a popular drink there. So he met Dietrich Mateschitz and they made it a worldwide the worldwide multi billion dollar drink That's brand that it is crazy. The invent the guy that invented it, he's dead. He dead. Oh now. yeah. I'm not sure how much he is worth. Let me see if I can find it quick. But uh yeah, I believe he died the richest man in Thailand from Red Bull. It's crazy. Red Bull now has two Formula One teams as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm still a little unsure of how that works or how Wh- that is. Which part? Well, like, so it's like Red Bull Racing. And Red then Bull Racing. And what, what's is, what's that second team? STR is the other one. Oh, okay. They, uh, okay, they were both teams were running before uh, before Red Bull came in. They were they were running um, the Renault engine. Okay, and I think they switched. They changed the name. It used, it used to be called Toro Rosso, and now they right. they became Italy based and changed it to Scuderia Toro Rosso. Okay, so Toro Rosso is Red Bull in Italian. Oh, right. that fucking makes sense. Thank right, you. right, right. <clears throat> well, hey, sorry, what they, do I know? So what is it? <laughs> S- Toro Rosso was running Ferrari, right? And now they're both running. Red nose. Yeah. So I said I said it the other way around. As of last year. Yeah, as of last year they switched. But they are Italian based. So basically what they were doing was using the Toro Rosso team as their junior team. So like Sebastian Vettel came up through there. Oh, okay. They bring their younger drivers in. (laughs) I think I'm not sure as much anymore because there's been as far as media speculation, because they don't talk about it themselves, that they've Mm -hmm. sort of been a separation between the teams and they compete a lot more than they used to, whereas they used to share more data. Okay. Which might be down to the part of the rules too. Right? Well, man, well, um, when uh, Sebastian Vettel uh, got his first win back in 2010, uh, Monza 2010, he was in a Toro Rosso was, that yeah, was, was essentially, Rosso. essentially a Red Bull. It was like it was it, it had all the bits of, of the Red Bull. It was basically the same car as the Red Bull, except for it had a Ferrari engine. Right, yeah. which I guess I'm sure they're using to their advantage by learning things from the Ferrari engine that yeah. they could pass on to Renault to put into their engines, right. which that made, doesn't happen which, anymore. Yeah, which made Renault as powerful as they were. They dominated for years upon years. Oh, four championships in a row. Yeah, well, quadruple championship, and mm-hmm. they were powerful outside of that as well. They were the team to beat every year, that like from 2011 to 2014. I'll save this or, for next week because yeah, it's, it's a huge story. But I think STR is sort of being... Oh, they're trying to sell it for sure. for sale. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I was, I've been sort of... I've been writing something about it. We'll talk about nice. it. It's a big story. Sweet. Too much to talk about right now. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this list is insane, man. It's insane. The premium teams... Five of the teams don't get any premium payments. Mm-hmm. Force India, STR, Lotus, Marusha, and Sauber. So the back back benches. All the back yeah. workers, yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy, man. It does seem a little crazy because like <coughs> you, would, not you, you would want fair. your yeah, you would want your sport <laughs> to be as competitive as it as it can oh, be, right? Oh. Or could be. Right. And by sort of limiting these people, like they they don't have there's like very little incentive besides actually winning to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like the philosophy is a little strange. And, and now because of, because of things like this, yeah. And and, and this is at the core of 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 the whole uh, thing that people have been complaining about the sport for years. Yeah. Like they they yeah they, they don't like nobody likes this or or, or you know because because yeah it, it does give the top teams a, a bit of an unfair advantage. Yeah. Right. Um. And and this is the kind of stuff that they've been trying to change forever. Uh. And and. And looking to change that, that's where they came up with this uh, F1 strategy group. Because <laughs> yeah, they said like, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, yeah F1 needs to change. We, we need to change F1 for the better, whatever. And changes need to be done. And the FIA wasn't being helpful because it's being run by Jean Todd. Um, so <laughs> uh, they basically gave a payout 
to the FIA and arrange a deal where instead of letting the FIA make the big decisions and the big changes that need to be made for the sport, yeah. uh, now every year they're just all the teams are just giving the FIA way more money than before. And out of all that, what they got is uh, they formed this strategy group but who are the members of the strategy group? Yeah. The strategy group, that, uh, as far as the teams are concerned, because uh, so strategy group has, um, it's, it's the voting for every, every rule of the strategy group is split three ways. Yeah. So uh, Ecclestone. 18 votes. Right. Yeah, 18 votes. Yeah. So Ecclestone gets six votes. Six for himself. Yeah. For just Jay. Uh, six votes are from the FIA. Oh, my God. And then the remaining six votes are from the teams. Uh, but who are the teams? Yeah. The teams are these top five that are getting the premium payments, plus, plus whoever f- was best the, the year before of right. the rest. This year is Force India. Yeah. So yeah, oh yeah, I remember that from uh, one of our previous podcasts. Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. Yeah. So the the strategy group right now is Ferrari, Red Bull, Mercedes, McLaren, Williams. And this so year is these guys, India. right? So and, getting the and, pay, the pay and, less, and you the and you bet payment. and you better believe that. This these teams, which mm-hmm. are like the ones that are obviously like very invested into the sport and 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 are the ones that are going to be pushed really hard, you better believe that if they come up with something, that's what's getting voted because they're right. yeah, totally <laughs> yeah. Now what uh, in terms of changing that? What what do you guys think will have to change in order for this structure to sort of evolve into think, something a little it's more just, it's maybe a little bit morbid but i think bernie ecclestone has to die yeah <laughs> yeah yeah he's shit he, he was okay so we're gonna be talking i guess we're starting now yeah. about this strategy group meeting they've been talking about for the last two months or whatever i guess since the season started pretty much no well, yeah they, this was supposed to be a, a, a an important strategy group meeting where many things were supposed to be uh, decided or many things were supposed to be at least voted on yeah so two or three days ago see i i guess there's nothing really to talk about the testing this week, right? No, not really. There was, yeah. For somebody, there's almost no coverage of it. This is where they did the preseason testing. Right. It was in Barcelona. So they do some of the midseason testing there. Right. That's why some of the aero packages came because they get to retest what they what they started their season philosophy with and see if what's working and okay. not, and what big changes yeah. that they've tried to make if they're better or not and it, it is they have so much data and it's significant from exactly right. yeah it's again yeah, exactly because they have so much data with with barcelona it only makes sense that if we're if they're gonna do a test in the middle of the season it would be there mm. so two or three days ago i guess during this uh echo stone's obviously hanging around and they asked him what do you think is going to come out of this meeting and he said basically nothing because we have a democracy there and i hate democracies <laughs> and he, he just wants to be like the dictator yeah. oh my god he basically said he predicted that they would agree on the date for the next meeting and that's probably it <laughs> that's <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that was his exact quote yeah and uh okay. it, tur- it turns out a lot more was decided on than that but it's not fair like i don't even i doubt that if they wanted to be there, which I'm sure they did, that Toro Rosso, Lotus, Marussia, and Sauber would not be allowed to go into that no, meeting. No way. And yeah. who even from those meetings are there? The team principals and that's it? Or what? I think they, they everybody sends some sort of a delegate, you know? I guess. Yeah, well, I'm sure, so. I'm sure, like... It would be... It, it, what would make sense is team principal, but I've, I, I, I know it that it be. wasn't all team principals at the, at the previous one, like before the year started. It wasn't all pr- team principals. And I think that... Um. Yeah. Some. Uh, remember, like for example, VJ Malia. Like I think attended one, or or no, it was John Booth. Uh, whatever. Anyway, I don't know. I got the just the impression from um, one of the team principals conferences at the start of the season, like that at least uh, Claire Williams was super involved in it. Yeah, she she, 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 she definitely is. Yeah, she might have been there, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, don't but for example, if t- if Sir Frank wants to go and show up, like he would. Right, like yeah, instead of her or with her, right? there's only one person per team is allowed there. Oh, I think it's one vote. Per really te- have one vote per team, right? I, right. I think it just it, it, whoever shows up to, to the meeting, like that's a bad. Like it could be that Ferrari showed up with three people. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. you want to maybe whispering in each other's yeah. ears. Yeah, and- yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know for sure. So we get in. Should we get into some of the discussion? Yeah. Well, we, yeah. What happened in the, in, in the meeting? Because yeah, some things did come out, but I think that. <laughs> Okay, one of the big things that, 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 that has been making the headlines is customer cars. Right. 
uh, and, and what customer yeah. car is it? Yeah, what customer car is essentially is is basically you have a team like Ferrari, for example. Yeah. Like actually build the chassis of your car and give it to you and uh, to another team and you race with it. Now, they, that could be spun in many different ways, but the spin that they're looking after, like uh, f for that particular um, uh, outcome, uh, is that it would save money. Right. Because that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to cut costs. So right. if you have another team build the, your car for you, you just pay them for the car right. and go and race with it, it could save money in, in, in the sense that they just then don't have to spend the, the, the all the all those resources in actually maintaining the facilities to build their own car. Right. So they they could they, they, they don't have to and, and the upgrades that go with that, right? Like the teams so, that are selling the cars are reducing their own cost too, as, taking in revenue and allowing more upgrades. Exactly. Improving the sport, possibly. Possibly. But possibly. this goes against and and and, and when we go back again, again to, to remember what at the beginning, uh, the first few podcasts, when I printed the the FIA rule book, or yeah. it hasn't the, the yeah. Formula One rule book, the, the technical regulations. One of the things, and, and remember, like we did a whole, I I did a whole segment on it. What is a constructor, and what 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 a constructor, what a Formula One constructor is, is very clearly defined in the rule books. And one of the main things is that they have to have to have to build their own car or or they can get they can actually get somebody else to bear to build a lot of the car for them mm -hmm. provided that somebody else does not compete in f1 right so right and and that is like that is a rule that has stayed the same way or or just like that for years like it, it, it just has been that way mm -hmm. in formula one for like for decades like i am i'm pretty sure like since they started to write the rules they just wrote that in and they said right. okay this is what's going to define the constructor right mm -hmm. um so it would be tampering with that with that particular by basically changing it tweaking that rule to say okay you know actually somebody else can build a big chunk of your car but that somebody can be uh your direct competitor in f1 and that that seems so squirrely exactly that is what a lot of people have a problem with. Yeah. I know that Williams, for example, has a big problem with that because yeah. they say, and and just the purists yeah. say that it ha it is it has to be it has to be a constructors championship. Yeah, it can be like it can be three constructors and and a bunch of customer cars. And yeah. and, and and now See, it's funny you mentioned Williams with that though because I remember seeing this once. We talked. We probably talked about this like a yeah. year and a half ago, yeah. and I can't find any more like good info on it is that williams part of uh, what's attributed to their recent success is that they partnered with some sort of russian um engineering firm or lab or something like that for their aerodynamics mm -hmm. but i don't know i can't find really any good info about it but that's that's fine that's and, and that's, that's that's all well that's and good part of it but yeah it, no that's all well and good because they're not competing against this russian firm for formula one right, right. Formula one. but because okay here here's here's what i what i would say you know and 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 in in, in that regards i've always thought that hey guys like why don't you just relax the rules not there but say in another part and let, let's picture this scenario where each team, right, has a country that they race for. They have to because they have to be sanctioned by uh, the uh, the sport of governing authority of each country. So mm -hmm. uh, Williams is racing for England or for the United Kingdom, uh, for India, for India, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mercedes races for Germany, right? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe allow them, allow uh, the team to say partner with a university in your country that you're raising for mm -hmm. and like like have like have yeah. have that that kind of partnerships so that so that it's you know and 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 uh so so you'd go to like the top engineering school in in germany in and and yeah and and ask him like hey like do you guys have some ideas like let's let's work with your facilities the university facilities as well yeah. get your top like uh, computational fluid dynamics professors get them on this you know, right. let's 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 yeah. figure out like how to like how to how to make these cars better, and that that doesn't have to cost 
anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the university would uh, would would would, would uh, benefit from it. Yeah, uh, the the car. The, obviously, the constructors would too, et cetera, et cetera. Things like that. These are creative solutions that don't that 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 circumvent all that. Because because there are so many of those solutions and everybody has an idea of of how to like make F one better that way. Yeah, that's why people just are so against customer cars too. Right. Because because it's not a solution. It's not the perfect no. solution. It's actually yeah. a really shitty solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have. I think that idea is just way too reasonable. Like <laughs> yours, like is, I was like, as soon as you, when you were talking about it, I was like, oh yeah, that seems like a really good idea. That yeah. will never happen. Yeah, <laughs> huh. exactly. Shit. Part of what Sorry, Danny. what I think, anyways, is awesome yeah. about Formula One is that every car is different. Yeah, you yeah, I mean? that, that's true. Yeah, exactly. They have their own <laughs> spirit to them, you know, like their own idea of them. Yeah, they were, like a Ferrari is not. Um, like a Mercedes, right, you know, correct? I mean, like yeah. there's yeah. things that are very different about them. Oh, for for sure. Yeah. Oh, what a we ew. Yeah. It, that's so slimy. Yeah, it's yeah. just ugh. it would it would just it would dilute the the essence of the sport to yeah. a point that I don't think it's it, it might be a solution that that would cut costs, but it's not a solution in the long term. It's it's gonna alienate some fans. You know, it's yeah. it's just gonna be so like incestuous. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's just like a whole bunch of fucking. Inbreeding, but to that, our and then boy, it turns into NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> That's another danger of it. But to that, our our boy Toby Gruner has something to say. Toby, then, yeah. <laughs> what does he say? What does he? Yeah, yeah. F one customer cars ideas will never be realized. Oh, read it out loud. Yeah. Uh, strategy group uh, just needed uh, something to show for. In reality, the meeting was a waste of time. <laughs> That's what Toby Gruner says. Yeah. And he's Toby. He, yeah, <laughs> I think that that's that's perfect. brilliant. Yeah, that's it's it's that, that's that's a good summary. Yeah, they they probably just threw out the idea again just to see if it stuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about customer mm. cars. I guess. <laughs> I see your reply. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but 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 that is part of it too. There's just this whole thing. Just it wouldn't be a problem if if the FIA were more involved, that were more were way more strong on on on. Just having like just, just having leadership. Mm -hmm. It just seems that right now that is what F one is missing, and maybe to 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 that to that extent, like maybe that's what Bernie. If anything, you can you can you can read into like him saying that oh it's a democracy or whatnot. It's because the, maybe there is a, a, a direction that is missing, and 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 and, yeah. a, and a clear leader yeah. to push, uh, like just to push. The sport and the way that it needs to be pushed—that's missing. Right. There's too many parties pulling in their in, in, in their own direction. Or as Taras number three two one at Krusty Alicious uh, re replied below: "Standard, really. This is what happens when you have self-governing in F1. Yeah. Or self-governing anywhere. Yeah. This is like like we said you before. Let, you let the top teams. It's I gotta close this window because I think we're getting some of this noise in the headphone. <laughs> <laughs> it's kids." It's like kids trying to vote on how many candies they get. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> somebody's talking to the mailman out there. Oh. Tell them to get lost. <laughs> but yeah, so but but other stuff did come out, and and they did they did do like did they did vote on some on some things for next year and the year before. Before okay, let's, I guess um, the change the one there's one change that they voted on for next year, and before and I, I think it's a great change to be honest. Before <laughs> before I mention it. The contract for the tire supplier expires at the end of 2016. And uh, there, there's been uh, some thought. That, okay, Michelin came out the other day, like a week ago, and said that they're considering and really want to get back into the sport. Yeah, but uh, uh, Ecclestone said that Michelin go, uh, will not come back to F1. Pro he said <laughs> that, but there's uh, I saw a number that uh, Pirelli right now pay... 40 million a year in advertising. You see, like, the Pirelli ads are all over the boards, the, right. the, the walls and everything. Yeah. And that Michelin, he doesn't, I would assume that he thinks, wouldn't I mean, be willing just... to spend that much money on advertising. Even They want to be the supplier, but maybe not spend money to throw their stickers up everywhere and mm -hmm. billboards. I don't know. But I, I kind of like the Pirelli thing. They've been... It's been going Doing well. Good. And, uh, man, the only we... thing I don't like is how they change the colors every year. Well, they haven't. They they haven't from last year to to this year. No, but, but almost year every year, I preferred the hard tires being black. Yeah, but they kind of looked like the white tires when they got dirty. 
And on TV, at least, the super soft and the hard, depending how well your TV is set up, I guess, they look very similar, the orange and red. Yeah. Which they could have picked one other color. Yeah, they could have picked like greener. Well, actually, no, green, green, is, green is for the intermediates. Yeah, yeah, you're right. yeah but they could have picked yeah. any other color. Make the hearts purple or whatever, <laughs> any color. Yeah. And they were they were silver too at one point. I think the hearts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They cha- I don't know. That's the only that's the only complaint I have though about Pirelli. But like we've said before, I th- and I still stick like stand by this. I think Pirelli up and down the paddock is one of the most professional companies. Like that in in in, in, the, in that they are doing exactly what they what they were asked to do and they like, yeah. they're just they, they they show up they 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 bring the tires they they're bang on they, they're doing mm-hmm. exactly what's what's required of them and they're doing a good job at it and they've adjusted their their compounds yeah. which everybody's likes i guess yeah <clears throat> but okay so before i guess after the michelin story came out but before the meeting came out mm. i assume pirelli somehow got this story into the media that they don't like they hate was what I read the primary and option labels on the tires, which is what they're called for the weekend. Right. Per- right. Pirelli themselves choose like, okay, we're at Monaco uh, next week. They're going to be the soft and super soft tires is what will be there for sure. Cause they want super grip. Right. So Pirelli decides that and they'll call. Oh, interesting. The prime, they call them the prime and option, not the soft and super soft. Right. right. And, uh, what the, and something that, they suggested that they wanted to be brought in was that they would choose uh, the tire choices would be a mystery. So I guess doing away with the colors, uh, they would still have the four compounds, but right. they'd show up at the weekend with a hard and a soft, which could be the super soft and the medium, oh, or that the soft okay, and medium, cool. or the medium and hard, like they do sometimes. Yeah, I've, they don't do it too often, but sometimes they skip one one compound right. and go to. Yeah, so they would want to do it. Basically, like you get the same amount of tires and everything, but it would be a mystery. Which I don't think would really work because the teams would pull out a microscope or like melt the rubber or whatever <laughs> and figure it probably out, yeah. figure out what compound it was pretty quickly. Yeah, and that was that was one thing they suggested. And a third thing was qualifying tires that they wanted separate tires for qualifying, but they suggested two sets per car per session. Which is insane. A lot. It's a That's lot. a lot That's of a lot tires. Of, yeah, we talked about this also before, like, or you and me have it in private at least. We try to figure out like how many tires thousands. are at the track <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like thousands. They bring the rain tires no matter what. If it's yeah, yeah. never rained in the all, car, all like, two sets. Yeah, like of, and, and however many like they, they bring need. the rain tires to the desert. They yeah That's and fucked. extra t- yeah, extras and tons and tons of tires. Yeah. So what's what's being agreed on for next year? Well, you know, you know what it is. Well, I've been talking for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> team's choice. Yeah, team's so choice. So teams get to pick what they want. Like so, out That's of the four, crazy. out of the four compounds, yeah. they're they're like, and it's. I think that that could be really fun. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of pressure on Pirelli because the thing is that it would be nice to see. We're gonna see a rainbow on track too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is that okay. So the way that Pirelli has been doing it is that they. Uh, they announce uh, ahead of time. I think it's either like half the races or a, a number of races. So at the beginning of the year, yeah. they already knew like okay, from uh, from now till say Spain or from now till oh, yeah, till Britain, yeah, mm-hmm. this is gonna be the tire location of each race. And then like later on, like well, so, I'm pretty sure soon we're gonna get another another announcement from Pirelli saying okay, from that point on till the end of the year, here are the tire allocation. Um, and what that allows them to do is to keep their factory in uh, in Turkey or whatever, where they actually make the tires, actually going and working throughout the year, oh. right? Because to, 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 to supply the tires and not just make them all in one big chunk, because that would just not make economical sense, right? Um, to store them, yeah, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. And these tires, like like from from nothing to a tire, it takes six months. Right. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if anyone hasn't check out on YouTube, there's a couple of videos they give you like a factory tour type of thing, yeah. and uh, you get a crazy a good idea of how much goes into building these tires. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's insane. Jesus. <laughs> but so if if you do give like all four tire choices for every team for every race, they're obviously gonna have to change their model. Yeah. They, they might do something like. 
pick let's go six races ahead but teams wouldn't have probably agree to yeah. go choosing six races at a time like they're gonna say i want to see how we run on these yeah. tires and these tires and yeah no they're not gonna do <laughs> yeah i guess yeah. So yeah, I don't know how it's gonna work. It's just gonna be a lot of stress on, on Pirelli's part, uh, part to show up with enough tires every single weekend for the team to make that decision, as opposed to you know the, the ones that they selected. I'm sure they'll be able to do it because, like I said, Pirelli are very professional and very good at what they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, another another final point on the tires is apparently what Michelin said is they would only come back on uh, the stipulation that. Formula One switched to 18 inch tires. And um, I think Pirelli also wants this. Yeah, Pirelli, but Pirelli, Pirelli wants it. They've yeah. tested this week, even they tested them um, at this track. Who uh, in the preseason testing, only one driver got to test them, right? I think it was Grosjean. Yeah, I, I forget so. who it was. Yeah. But I think it was only one guy got to test them. Yeah. But does they want to bring in these big 18 inch tires? I'm not exactly sure why. I guess there's less material. The, yeah, si- well, like, the sidewall is less of the shorter. compound. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, so, one, I'm not I, 100% I, I sure. I guess for 2017, we're going to be seeing this little 18-inch mm-hmm. rims. Are we? For 2017, is that... Yeah, because the... Probably, it, it, yeah. Well, Pirelli wants it. Well, if Michelin comes back... There, they want it. There yeah. is going to be an open open tender worldwide. Any tire manufacturer or anyone that wants to manufacture tires can submit a proposal that mm-hmm. we want to be the tire supplier. And uh, I don't know. I think the reason Michelin left originally was because they wanted to be the sole supplier, right? That they were competing with well, the Bri- was it Bridgestone? Bridge, yeah, it was. There were there were two manufacturers back in the day before mm-hmm. Pirelli came in, and the teams would choose one or the other. Mm-hmm. And I think Michelin wanted to be the sole supplier. Which, oh, okay. But also, um, towards the end, it just came very like it became very evident that the Bridgestone tires were just better. Like they were just they they were better. I believe Michelin <laughs> still supplies tires for a lot of other racing series. Yeah, they do. They're still in the t- racing tire game, but yeah. I guess we'll see. There's gonna be like uh, unravel. I guess there's gonna be the whole tender process. But yeah. I, I assume, as you said, that it will be Pirelli again for the next set, the next five years or eight yeah. years or whatever they agree on. Just with the with the, uh, what's but interesting I, about I'm those, pretty sure they were gonna get the 18 inch rims. Yeah. Oh, what's interesting about those is that, um. The, I think the argument is that the only reason why they're not 18-inch rims right now is because uh, that 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 rule was put in place that the the the, 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 the hubs had to be a certain dia- a diameter is because they didn't want um, the teams to have like super big like discs uh, like Big, brakes. bigger brakes yeah because because they wanted to limit the the the, the, the brakes but. That was sort of a, uh, it's inherited from a long time ago where like right now, like it's irrelevant. Yeah. It's almost. The brakes are so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Carbon ceramic brakes that. Yeah. Unwear outable. They they can stop a 747 or what like (laughs) 380, the same type of brakes. Exactly. So it's. A plane that weighs hundreds of tons. It's become so irrelevant that kind of, uh, then, then now it's like, okay, why not? Why don't, why don't we just. Do the bigger tires is gonna it's gonna look kind of cool too. Yeah, it'll look, look get the <laughs> that's what everyone wants to throw a, throw some dubs or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> throw some dubs on your ride. <laughs> and also, uh, that would I some some say that it could lead to better air, aerodynamics, like just more air, depending on how you des, how you design them, I guess. Yeah, uh, more air beam. But the the other side to that is that right now uh, a big chunk of the actual suspension of the car is done by the tire sidewall. The sidewall, yeah. yeah. Just, that's what I was thinking, the less material. Formula E is on the 18-inch wheels too, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So they've sort of been testing it. It works. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure we'll see it in a Formula 1. I'm sure it will be t- t- fine. No, th- th- that, yeah, that's, I think it's going to be yeah. a non-issue. Yeah. I, I'm not really sure why Pirelli would say that they want it. But I don't know. It's something we can look into. For sure, yeah. Uh, so basically, that's all that's being set though for next year is the team's choice of tires. That's the yeah, only that's real a- change that came up in the meeting, and the only one that's set. And the thing to remember, we're, we're going to talk about 2017 now. All of these changes that the strategy group has agreed on have to go through two more levels of uh, right. scrutinizing and writing papers and binders of. Bo- well, but they basically come, goes, come out, come, come up with the these F1 rules. Commission. Yeah, right. 
And then what's the other one? Is the, uh, World Motorsport the Council. World, yeah. yeah. The FIA's council. Yeah. But... Through two more levels. The, the understanding, and obviously this is all just politics and backroom dealing, is that this is going to go through. This is like the changes that are put forth by the F1 strategy group are expected to just be approved and just, just yeah, stand. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Except for maybe one, <laughs> which is refueling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that, man. I, I disagree with that idea. I what, like refueling? It. Yeah, I don't like it. But see, okay, so this this is what... Okay, let, let's let, let's just say, okay, so for for 2017... Uh, there's they agree on four things. Uh, they want faster cars. Yeah. Uh, with the, the, the with two, uh, so they say five to six. So the target is gonna be five to six seconds a lap per lap faster. average per track. Yeah. So yeah. So this, these are gonna be considerably Holy faster cars. Shit. Uh, in 2017, uh, and they're gonna achieve that through aerodynamic rule revolution. So uh, what what mostly aerodynamics is how yeah. they're gonna achieve it. Yeah, mostly aerodynamics. Uh, also wider tires. And reduction of the car weight, right? right. Reduction of the weight, which yeah. they just increased by a hundred kilos. Yeah, but for a lot of reasons, and a lot of drivers, the taller guys and the bigger guys, yeah. were happy with that. Yeah. Well, so they're gonna reduce the the weight of the car, and, but the wider tires. I'm excited about that because that's they just look so badass. But they're reducing and, the minimum weight though. Uh right? right. Yes. Which is you can be over which the cars over. will be over depending how much fuel's in their tank the, n- no because the the thing about it doesn't it, include the fuel well of course it, it includes the fuel but yeah, the so thing about it is that it does, it, okay. it, without like w- when they ban refueling and you can see like a picture side by side of the cars the cars were actually 22 centimeters shorter or like i, I guess the length the of length it? of the car yeah the whole length of the car cuz a be, smaller gas tank be, be, be exactly the, the, the gas tanks now because there's no refueling they have to be bigger they have to accumulate accumulate uh, like account for like full race distances right if the, you reduce that load yeah the car can be actually shorter it has so it's, it's, so th- there's there's a lot there's a lot to be gained from that both in aerodynamics obviously like the lot the, the weight uh, having a, a, a smaller gas tank uh, but also just just in in the way that they like uh, that the car like distribution of say things like uh the wheelbase right like yeah the, it's it's good so the, the cornering is going to be affected all that all that is it, 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 i'm sure it's going to be included different. yeah right and so again be, because of that i'm sure that these two go hand in hand the the refueling is going to allow for like and the weight uh, reduction yeah and the weight reduction um and then higher revving engines and increased noise <laughs> is one increased thing. noise yeah, yeah. This is the, they've been talking about forever this is what the that dude from singapore the he's the what is like the president of the country or something I, or, no he, or just like, like he's, the, he's like he's the, the track promoter or something, or something. Yeah, I remember last year he was all like ah, with Bernie Ecclestone, but he's like, hey, come on, like on camera they they caught him, and he's like, come on, Bernie, we gotta get these cars louder. Maybe we're not gonna have to renegotiate the uh, holding a Grand Prix here, you know? <laughs> just, he's kind of joking around, but yeah, he was kind of serious too. Yeah, no. honestly, I didn't think it was the volume is fine, man. From last year, it's it's loud enough. It's like I, I said before, the way the volume is now with your ears open is very similar to how the old cars were with. Ear muffs or earplugs on. Mm. Yeah. Which so I don't know, in, in which t- in terms you don't of like, have to you don't really have to keep earplugs in or wear something like this. Yeah. I, I had I went to the Home Depot and just got like some construction ear muffs. Yeah. That's what I originally bought them for was <laughs> to take to <laughs> to the take that fun. Yeah, whatever, those or whatever. Or having earplugs shoved in your ear yeah. sucks. Yeah, no. Those and, old cars were loud as hell. It's awesome to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. But I guess we're gonna feel it again. Feel the fever. <laughs> Most of these changes, though, like I'm disappointed with, especially all the talk that's been going on about this thousand horsepower and and, 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 and look at I'm this. I'm not a person that but, is mm, against change at all. But but ch- check this out. Yeah, they're saying higher revving engines and increased noise. But now they want the higher engine, the the, the higher revs. Like that, that that is something that they agree. But but without changing the fuel flow exactly, or the maximum amount of fuel per race exactly. Allowed. So what the and, and now what what there's what they're gonna what the what this uh, or one possible solution that's speculated um, about how to achieve this is longer gears. Yeah, just the, lengthening go, the gears. Going going down to, from eight gears to six. Like this, there was yeah, there were seven before. Go to six and make them longer. 
Which so is what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is honestly the that eight, is artificial. Eight gears is pretty ridiculous. We kind of skipped over it because honestly, I was disappointed in uh, there's all this talk about Brundle driving the Force India. <laughs> the feature was kind of yeah, lame. Honestly, like they showed like a four minutes. And then they took away his grid walk, I assume because of that. Like, Brundle's getting too much attention this weekend. <laughs> yeah. The grid walk was shit, too, this weekend. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, well, yeah it was for Spain. That was yeah, so they, they, bad, they, they, they don't. They, they, they shouldn't do that again. <laughs> yeah, because Damon... What did they do? It was, uh, they took Damon Hill and um, uh, Johnny Herbert, and they let the two of them do it. And they were just kind of like, Ugh, like tw- turning around and getting... Confused. It must be overwhelming, obviously. Damon Hill said at the end, he's like, oh, we get an idea, you know, the, uh, Martin's a... Uh, and then he got interrupted and he, he didn't say, like, why Martin Brundle's so good at that. He makes himself, like, I think he caught himself speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, he just kind of, like, trailed off and somebody else, probably Simon, started talking. But <laughs> it was bad, man. And that, that segment was shit. But one thing that he said was that... He's like, man, I'm shifting a lot. He's like, you're just shifting. All you're doing is shifting. <laughs> That's all you're doing is eight <clears throat> gears. They're really short gears. You yeah. just shift and shift and shift. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It's it's dumb. This refueling thing, I don't think will go through. They'll probably increase the fuel flow and amount. And because. But how cool would it be? Okay. And okay what look is, at, oh, it, no, it, it would. It would. They but want okay, more on track action. Out. There's gonna be passing in the pits now instead. This is this is one of the possible volume, consequences. This is one of the reasons why they stopped the refueling in the first place. I remember watching this on VHS. Boom! Knock that dude over. <laughs> so the hose didn't come and like look, they, they just had the Schumacher's car. I think or no, 2008. But whatever. It looks, yeah, seeing he's dragging and st- stopping the dude behind him. Yeah. Dragging the fuel hose down the pit lane, spraying gas everywhere. Oh my Knocked god. Knocked the over. He ran over this guy's foot. I remember this happening. Yeah. And this was one of the main reasons why they stopped refueling. No, the pause This is like one of the final pushes for it. <laughs> go 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 to the right. Oh, th- this one this one is pretty brilliant. Okay, so so he did the same thing now, but yeah, boom! Oh Sprayed gas all over that dude. Whoever this car that was, and it ignited. There was Co- a mist of gas. I think. Colliden. Yeah. Jesus. Like, what <laughs> so, the fuck? That's what I mean. Everybody is going to be wearing, have to wear fireproof suits. Yeah. Uh, Ted's definitely not going to be wearing sandals anywhere anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got, like, fireproof masks on, and uh, I'm sure... Well, they all look like stormtroopers now anyways. What difference does it make? <laughs> They well, all have like these crazy helmets on. If, yeah, you see like that insulated tube. It's because it's dangerous as hell. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. And you're trying to. Tra- they have these huge pumps that are just like <laughs> pushing. It's not like you go to the gas station. You have a it minute. Kind of pours out. Yeah, you have a minute or two to get your your fuel in. <laughs> these things are like injecting. Yeah, yeah like I think I think it's like, yeah, it's a it's a hose inside another hose, and then like the the outer hose it's is insulated. sucking the air out while the while the inner hose. Like puts fuel oh, in. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. It's crazy. But one it's of the things I I think I'm gonna say now that I don't think that out of all these rules changes that won't happen. Yeah, obviously that they're gonna have to make a very strong case for safety above all above everything. Uh, and also I think that teams are gonna want it to be even quicker than before. Like they're gonna they're gonna want a, a yeah. different system than that because because they're now, now doing two sec- pulling off two point three second stop right they're not gonna be able to do that no uh but they're probably gonna want to still aim for like a ridiculously low number like four seconds or something uh, to pump like a whole bunch of fuel in they so, want all this passing there's so much passing now the DRS worked it's yeah. awesome there's comp- more competition yeah and uh, curves that was awesome. Now, now they're going back to passing in the pits. The one guy's going to be fueling gas, and other cars are going to go by on different strategies. Exactly. Yeah, man. Refueling yeah. is not good. Re- refueling is probably one of the things that I'm going to say er, sh- maybe shouldn't shouldn't be approved and for sure. Part of the reason for that is they threw out the idea of a thousand horsepower. It's not happening. That's what Echo Stone's been. The main point that Echo Stone says every time somebody puts a mic in his face, we want a thousand horsepower. We want a thousand horsepower. Yeah. Not happening. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't know yet because there's still more of these meetings. Yeah, there's meetings. so many of these meetings. It's two more years away, but <laughs> it's apparently not happening. Yeah. 
But I mean, uh, oh, and another thing, I guess, like the fourth thing that, that they did agree on was uh, more aggressive looks. And this is just purely mm. for the show. Do you remember those putting teeth concept cars that we looked sharp at? Sharp teeth on well, the cars. Uh, and uh, according to 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 Toby, is 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 gonna be more like the Ferrari look. Yeah, we looked at these a couple yeah. weeks ago. Did, did I and there was you that? a the link um, around the same time. Red Bull put one out too, but the the Red Bull ones looked a lot more similar to the current. Uh, that's right. Yeah, it's like, yeah. The, the, I guess the the two teams that actually brought proposals out for the aggressive looks were yeah. Ferrari and Red Bull. And the talk is that the strategy group is definitely like veering more towards the, the Ferrari uh, vision. Personally, for me, like I'm not big on aesthetics. I don't get this whole looks thing. Like last year, like oh, everyone was like almost crying about these noses. Like oh, the proboscis nose or whatever. It looks like a dick on the front of the car, like, <laughs> running around with two dildos, like the Lotus. Like who cares, man? It does not matter at all. Oh, it does matter, man, because no. these cars, like at the end of the day, I, I mean, not to me. Well, not, not not. I mean, not at the end of the day, but it, it's obviously not an important, a super important thing, but. It is like it would be nice if they if you can as a as a kid have a, like a poster in your in your bedroom of, of one of these cars. And obviously you're gonna wanna do that if the car looks badass. They look badass like they do now too. Like Yeah, but not last year. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't have like you know bought my kid my kid like a picture of that for India with the dildo at the front. Like you said. <laughs> Why? Because your kid's gonna think oh, how come there's a dildo on there? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dad, why is there a dildo on the car? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> It was Jeez. an era. The talk about looks to me is dumb. Okay. Well, it, it, we're going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, I guess we, we're going to see. When yeah. you sexually identify as a Formula One car, <laughs> things, <laughs> things need to change. <laughs> One thing I saw the other day and I couldn't find again. Somebody po- It was on Reddit. Uh, somebody posted a picture that I believe was from a textbook. And showed, uh, maybe I can just draw this kind of what it looked like quickly. I have a piece of paper here. Um, basically, it showed like a standard Formula One rear wing like this, right? Yeah. How they are now. Here's the tires. I'll hold this up to the camera in a second and whatever. Here's the engine. And then they showed a different design that was something like this, right? With the bottom wing here. And then here's the tires mm. and the engine, right? So here is how the are we can I see? Can we throw up yeah. here just so I can line this up to the camera? Yeah. So here is what they kind of look like now. You get the idea, right? <laughs> like a, a standard wing. <laughs> this was the idea that was thrown to reduce dirty air behind the car. Just have like sort of two split wings. It's like a split with a. With a dip in the middle. With a gap in the middle? Okay. And so what happens... That seems with, structurally unsound. So what happens with these... But I'm not an engineer. <laughs> is here. I'm going to draw some airflow. And then yeah. air comes from under the car like this. Right. From underneath. Yeah. And this causes a lot of turbulence like this. Right. And this type of wing, the air goes more like this. I see. But would it produce so, the same amount of, of downforce? You can get a very clo- similar amount of downforce. So the top wing... Is doing that. The air shoots straight up off the top of the wing, and yeah. there's a very low pressure underneath the car that makes a downforce. With this split wing, you still get that the downforce, but the air kind of dips down and is a lot more smooth. So you heard this on even the commentary this weekend was uh, Vettel was saying something like, "I can't get close. I can't get close to right. them because you start getting into hot air and uh, it messes air. up your aerodynamics because you get oh, shit. the air is going like this, yeah. like yeah. turbulence." Mm-hmm. So one of the proposals that's being talked about with the new aggressive looks and the uh, aerodynamics and saving money is mm-hmm. to have more uh, some standard aero that reduces this dirty air to allow even closer racing to allow the cars to get up closer behind each other. Hey, if it can, oh, if it shit. can be, if it can be done, I'm all for it. Because because that is. I wish I had those real pictures, but it was something like this. It was a split rear wing that, that is suggested one... that you could get very similar downforce. I mean, this, Crumble this piece of shit up. Uh, yeah, you can get very similar downforce without affecting the cars behind you. But what these teams are trying to do is affect the cars behind them. 
the air <laughs> wizards are making the downforce and trying to get dirty air on the side the side boards of the rear wing those slots are to create a vortex coming off the right. side that oh but that's well, that, well that is supposed to like also create a bit more downforce it's too pretty, but, but it, it yeah. is but it's it's awesome when the engines blow like it recently like they have been especially because like, he because you can, can see you yeah. see this the swirl that's you see true. the airflow it looks yeah. awesome yeah you yeah. can see how dirty it is <laughs> that was another i don't know how much it was talked about in the meeting but that was something that was speculated about mm-hmm. for 2017 with these aggressive looks I don't know. Another couple of things discussed, uh, which I don't think was any agreement either way for next year or the year after, was a reflection on the format of the race weekend. Oh my god! Like having two races per weekend—that's the dumbest thing. I didn't actually. I never heard that. Yeah, I heard I never saying that. I heard getting rid of uh, Friday practice. Oh, oh that's or stupid. at least the first practice because they don't really need it, mm-hmm. and saving more money. Getting rid of that practice, shortening the weekend. Yeah, but people are there the to watch. Yeah, people go there to hang out for the weekend. People yeah. are flying into countries to watch these races. They want yeah. something to do all weekend. That's true. And yeah. I'm sure for the TV rights, too, enough people watch those free practices. Like even even here, man, we're like we're gonna have to go to basically another country because Quebec is basically another country <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. go watch this race. Yeah, we're Live. going far, yeah. like five six hundred kilometers away. Yeah, in in, in many in may in, if this was if this was Europe, we'd have to cross like f- maybe like four or five different countries. I remember you know when I, mean? I was really young, like nineteen ninety two or ninety three. Obviously, I didn't buy it, but I remember I had a T-shirt that said, at the time of the uh, separation referendum in Canada, whatever it was, (laughs) it said, uh, my Canada includes Quebec. (laughs) Anyway, they want want to be their own country, though. Not so so much anymore, but... Yeah, not so much anymore. But you notice a little bit of rudeness when you don't speak, you go to a convenience store or something and you don't speak French there? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, if you don't at least say like merci or whatever, yeah. like, thank you or hello. Oh, the the the, the subway operators. <laughs> it's like he he refused to sell like to uh, to sell me uh, a weekend pass. But the thing is that they call it a weekend pass. Well, well, they call it uh, weekend limite. Right. But it has the word weekend in it. Yeah. And I went up to the booth and I asked, "Can I have a weekend pass?" I'm clearly not. I'm not asking for anything, but like, and I pointed. Can I have a weekend pass? And he just refused to acknowledge that I was there until actually you went and you were like, "Oh, we can't even limit it." <laughs> I don't remember that, but yeah. I believe yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I feel like uh, there's little things like that yeah. that you notice around Quebec. Not everybody, but there's yeah. a few people yeah. there. These, kind of cunty. Yeah, they just huh, <laughs> turn up their nose uh, instantly. I am too important. <laughs> <laughs> Quebec is awesome though. Montreal yeah, is a yeah, fucking Montreal, cool city. Yeah. Montreal is a badass. City. As a city, Montreal is probably one of my favorite cities <laughs> in, yeah, in yeah, the for, world. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. 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 They have a couple of things figured out there. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really cool. Another thing that was discussed with no real uh decision either way was the starts, the race starts. Uh getting oh, rid of assists in uh, yeah, all, in yeah. all senses. Like, look what happened to Hamilton this weekend. He's uh, anti-stall or whatever the engine, whatever it is. The, the, it's almost like a traction control because he was going to stall the engine and he's spinning his tires. The fuel cut out and then Vettel got past him. They yeah. wanted it to so be ha- like... They, 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 they want to have start, starter motors in the car, basically. Start? No, no, no. Yeah, they, 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 so what they're saying is like they want the, like, the drivers to be able to start the car. Oh. Without like having an external starter motor. Oh shit! That's not yeah. how I read. I read it like as a race start, getting rid oh. of assists. I don't know. That's, I think that's what it is. Okay, I I'll have to reread it again now. Yeah, I'm it could be an engine start. Yeah. I read it as a race start. No, 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 no. The start, like the the starting of the engine. Hmm. Okay, okay. Which which could be? I mean, it, it could it could help the racing because sometimes like. You go off the track or whatever, and the engine stalls, and nothing then, else is wrong. Then you're done. Yeah, th- th- yeah. Then your race is done, but nothing else is wrong. You could have gone if only you would. You were able to just jump, start the car again. It happens even on the on the grid sometimes too. Yeah. The car stalls, then the race starts. Everybody's <sighs> going around a lap, and there's already safety car or whatever <laughs> yellow flags that's, to get the car off the track. That's right. That's right. Yeah, 
if they had if they just had like a button that like would start the engine again yeah they wouldn't be like in their position but they would at least be able to like catch it without having to start from the pit lane or something right the, before these hybrid engines the reason for that was that they don't want to have to put a battery in the car that weighs enough to give enough amperage current to start the engine but there's, al they, there's already battery there yeah, yeah. they're full of batteries yeah right so yeah as long as they have enough ers built up probably, probably do and, like enough a, of the battery power saved up yeah i'm doing the installation lab just do like a bit of harvesting there you know what i mean yeah that could work i think that could work and i think that that's i think that's that could be a very sensible solution uh and, and something that would at least um like help bring a, a bit more action to the races because if if your engine stalls that doesn't mean that it's the end of the game for you which is like it's all right yeah I, i'd say it's all right and it doesn't ruin the starts of the race with the yellow flags or safety cars yeah, yeah okay i agree to that yeah. that must have been what i read i just yeah. read it wrong and uh the fifth engine proposal is being outright rejected now it's it's over yeah <laughs> yeah that's the that that wasn't going to happen. Like It's yeah. not going to happen. Uh, they had agreed to it at the start of the season. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. And then uh, Mercedes said, we'll agree if it's only for practices, right. if it's only for, or maybe he might have even said only for Friday practices. There's some if people it, already that are in the fourth engine. Isn't like Ricciardo yeah. in his fourth engine? Yeah, Red Bull. <laughs> I saw a quote from Horner. I wrote it down, actually, a direct quote. Inevitably, they will be using five to eight engines. <laughs> yeah. So they say he said basically like a fifth engine wouldn't even help them. It would they save them one penalty, but they're going to be using five to eight per Jeez. car for the season. Yeah, well, Red, they're, they're Red already up least. to four. They're, they're, so wait, uh, they <laughs> blew like, up almost every single week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> almost every single engine yeah, blew ra up. race per week or uh, an engine per weekend. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So I think some f uh, final speculation from me, anyways, on all of this talk is that the reason they're not doing this thousand horsepower thing. And I guess I'll talk, get more into it next week. Is that um, I guess Red Bull, who owns two teams and have a sweetheart deal, yeah, and Formula One in general are trying to entice the Audi group to get into F1, oh, yeah, that's and true. stabilizing yeah. the engine rules. And I'm sure Honda as well. They're like, oh, what the fuck? Like we just got in here, built this engine, <laughs> and now we're gonna like almost double the horsepower, yeah, add another true. forty percent horsepower. Yeah. They want to stabilize. <sighs> The craziness, and I'm sure like this gets tiring for fans too. And no, you stabilize it. You're, no, you're gonna stick that, with that's, the same That's a good power. point. Honda wouldn't wouldn't want that at all, especially because they'd have to completely redesign. Remember, like how we discussed that their their turbos that are inside are just little turbos. Yeah, they just wouldn't be able to to achieve that that much horsepower. Like if if they increase the fuel flow and everything else, right? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, maybe. No, it, it just wouldn't. It wouldn't wait. It just wouldn't work. They because they 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 designed it for this specific formula in mind. Yeah, they can get it. They're getting an, as much boost as they need for the size of engine and yeah. fuel flow that they have. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, they're going to be on the podium in uh, three more races. Oh, so. Yeah, so they think. Maybe they're, they're, maybe it's, somebody somebody in there is d deluded. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the turbo is bigger and better than you think. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll definitely see for sure. Uh, in Montreal, not not necessarily next week because uh, Monaco is going to be like a lot about the drivers, obviously, and 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 the car is like their aerodynamics. But in terms of engine, we're gonna like Montreal is gonna be a big test mm, yeah. for all the engines, mm, and and oh, and people are already can't like wait to go to Montreal, yeah, and people are already like thinking. I mean, I think I think most teams are probably gonna show up with like like engines that are be that have been developed. Like some tokens are gonna be spent for Montreal, mm. yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Uh, Ferrari's promising a lot. Yeah, Ferrari definitely wants to. And yeah, I think the other I think, ones are all. Up I think in the Ferrari, air. Ferrari is like pro like their best chance to get uh, another win is going to be like because not enough for Monaco unless it rains and Vettel or uh, Raikkonen do something crazy in the rain. Um, yeah, yeah. For 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 Montreal though, they can definitely like capitalize on like having like that top power. Ferrari is the only engine though that said like. Yeah, we're coming with power, so we'll look out. Everybody else is like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Renault is going to need to spend some points once they figure out what the hell's wrong with their engine. <laughs> but that's the problem. I, th I don't think they do know. Well, I, th I saw a story t that was it came out this afternoon just before we started this from, um, was that Bitebul? Yeah, Cyril. Cyril, yeah. Cyril. He said uh, that now Renault believes that they have a big problem with their testing bench, with their dynamometer. Oh, the dyno, right. I, I read that too. Yeah. But so, I, I only read the, the headline. Okay, so did they say what it was? Like, like a lot of teams, they, they test some aero, 
in the wind tunnel and it's awesome then they take it to a track and it's not doing what they thought at all true so he, he likened that to what they're experiencing with their engine that they run it on the dyno and they run all day they just keep on they go yeah. and then they bring it to the track and it blows up and flames shoot out of it yeah maybe there is something yeah it could be i mean something's not correlating for them i guess yeah and if they only have like the one dyno yeah and haven't had t- uh, a chance to like compare it with other but what where would you You'd have to like basically like if you wanted to go to like see one hundred percent if 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 your dyno was bad like you'd probably have to go to another team, but bringing your engine to another team is probably a, a big no no. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if there, there if there is some other dynos they could rent yeah. for a, an afternoon to test it out. <laughs> It'd be more than an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it must be an expensive machine though. For sure, and like it has to be like it has to be able to like cope with like the F one demand yeah. of like revs and whatnot. Yeah, and horsepower. Yeah, uh, fact checking I did on myself uh, while you were talking there. Red Bull was originally called Krating Daining. It was invented in 1976. But it, that that means Red Bull in Thai, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's something. Yeah, it's something like yeah, yeah. Red Red Bull invented in 76, and that dude died 2012. He was 90 years old. He was the third richest man in Thailand, not the richest. Jesus. But he had five billion dollars. So his family's set forever. Yeah. <laughs> and their families. And their families, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came from nothing, but that's the guy. Jesus. So. Bull's tex- testicles. They got, th- that's where they get this taurine, right? Like, that's 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 what they call it, Red Bull. Yeah, I think that's where taurine yeah. comes from, yeah. yeah. Bull's it's testicles. Like a, some sort of... Bull's, bull's s- testicle s- extract. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess uh, is is that is that all we got for now? Just okay. We, oh wait, no. Actually, I wanna I wanna make um um uh, uh, just remark on something important. Yeah. Um, next week is the Monaco Grand Prix. It's gonna be amazing. I'm sure yeah. we're gonna have like a couple features. Uh, we're gonna do a, a show before of, uh, as a preview. Uh, Seven days. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be back before then. Yeah, we'll be back before so then. We're late again. Yeah, and we're, we're gonna we're probably just gonna talk about Monaco and how cool it is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But after that, an Audi. Two weeks after that is the Canadian Grand Prix. Yes. And we're gonna be there. Tons of stuff st- still coming. We're still uh, trying to finalize some details uh, about that. Uh, to the guys um, uh, that are on Reddit too, Reddit is going to have a meetup. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be there at the meetup as well. Yes. Uh, I missed that last year because I was at we're definitely going to be there. in the far we're, north of Canada. We're going to be there for the for the for the track for the open track day. That's going to be fun too. Uh, lots of stuff coming up, guys. Uh, look up. I think we're uh, at one point or another. We're gonna, well, or at least I'm gonna try to like uh, organize. Uh, uh, an outing to go out and get some real Montreal poutine. Oh, well, dude, you don't yeah. even have to mention that. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're that, definitely going to do that. That's what you do in Montreal. Yeah, so. and uh, poutine. Tons of stuff. We, we'll have that. All, all that. All those details ironed out um, by next week or the week after that. And uh, hope to see as many of you guys uh, out there as uh, as you can. Please, please try to make it to Montreal. There's still tickets. There's still like a uh, general Hopefully we'll stuff. see about 200,000 of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 225. So. Yeah, look us up. Uh, we're uh, thoughtofever.com and uh, listen to Bamboo <laughs> as always. Yeah, listen to Bamboo.com. Yeah. Uh, what don't, else we got? Reddit. Don't listen to Hamilton.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Twitter, Reddit. Subscribe on iTunes. It's a big one. Subscribe on yeah. YouTube. Click yeah. That. Click that button. See you guys. Bye.